This telecast of our signal to our off-track betting parlors is authorized by Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited for the sole use of our licensees. Any reception, interception, retransmission, redistribution, or other use of the signal without the express written consent of Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited is strictly prohibited and will be the subject of criminal prosecution and civil action. Any equipment or apparatus involved in such a use is subject to seizure and forfeiture under the law. Game to fame is in, field in line, seven furlongs, they're off immediately. And game to fame, and Lambo girl the slowest to leave. They charge down the back stretch, sorting themselves out on the front end. And bad investment and atomic energy along with the big strike, these three go at it as they leave the six, and atomic energy now takes that lead. Lambo girl rushing up to take second, big strike in a handy spot in third. The favorite bad investment is in fourth, possibly five lengths off that lead, joined almost by Dimitri P as they leave the five. The gray roaring thunder further back, then game to fame. Smart player races next, and at the back it is security code as they are about to arrive at the half mile in the first event.
Atomic Energy skittering along on that lead by a length under those tickling tail. Lambo Girl continues the chase from second. Bit Strike is now unleashed and asked to close that gap. That investment also asked to make ground. Roaring Thunder picking up on the outside. Maybe three lengths separates that first clump as they're about to arrive at the 516. The gap opens to Dimitri P. Game to fame. Smart player and a long way last. It's a security code as the leaders come thundering into the top of the stretch in the first and Blitz Strike has now taken charge. Here's the favorite. Bad investment now. Lengthening strides on the outside and Bad investment joins a Blitz Strike briefly. Bad investment now points the nose in front. Blitz Strike fighting right back and the race is on. Inside the final furlong, Blitz Strike now reclaims that lead. Running past the final 16th. It is Blitz Strike out in front and being driven to the max to hold the advantage. A Blitz Strike and a Ray and Lewis. Action pack Ray and Lewis. They take the first by maybe three. Bad investment second. Dimitri P in a photograph with Roaring Thunder. They finish third and fourth. Smart player may just be fifth over Atomic Energy, but it's close. Often racing, that's a beautiful line right in the mix and going right through now. That is a affair on the outside of affair that is unruly done. So, affair is just a leader from unruly done racing in a second right there against the real Daxi Maya in the between horses. That's oil machine and out wide. That's Rocola. Then comes the general coming down nicely into it. First offense comes next, and racing at the back of the field, that's Solar Black. They have left the four and head toward the three, and it is unruly done on that lead. Right there, too, that's a fair coming up on the inside. Stalking them from third, that is the general. Also coming on on the rail, that is Imaya. Out wide, that's first offense. Oil Machine is right in the mix, too. They're at the top of the lane, and it is unruly done with that lead affair, trying to switch switches off the rail as unruly done switch down on the rail with that lead it's unruly done in front of a fair the general coming forward also coming forward nicely that's Rocola it is the general it is making the runnings unruly done in front coming to the half a prolonged pole unruly done looks to have this one all one still chasing in second that's a fair Rocola running on for third but unruly done put paid to the field by about three lengths second a fair then comes Rocola and the oil machine back in fourth They're ready. They're off for the dash. Ruby's light came out awfully and has a lot of catching up to do. Smart trick took off fast on the Ray and Lewis. It goes for that lead as they approach the half mile. Smart trick on the rail. Bold move pulling alongside. The global machine stalking them in third. A break back to Bold Shadow. The Soul Warrior Grey racing on the inside of Bold Shadow. A huge gap opens up to Noble Sovereign and D-Bay Machine. And Ruby's light not shining at all a long way last. They leave the 516th about to come into the top of the lane. There's a battle roll up front and bold move in between runners just has it. Smart Trick will have to fight on down against the rail. And here's the favorite Global Machine now kicking in on the outside and a Global Machine and a bold move match strides. Smart Trick is over against the rail. The Soul Warrior running on on the rail. Bold Shadow is there too, but three almost across the track as they leave the furlong pole. And it is a bold move holding that lead. Global Machine continues to harass. Here is Smart Trick now kicking in on the rail. It is bold move and a global machine and Omar Walker. They bob heads to the line close. Might be a global machine over bold move, but it's close. Then smart trick, bold shadow, the soul warrior.
Ready for a start for Michael Sims. They're off right away. Mr. Senator and uh, Super Alex, those are the slowest ones as they head down the back stretch, heading toward the six, and it's Royal Ash narrowly in front of Ella Fortunado coming up on the rail. That is KD Strong right beside them on the outside. That's Life is Life, just behind Life is Life and on the rail. That is uh, She's My Hedge Fund coming around nicely. That is Super Alex after that bad break. Then comes a Savvy Girl behind them. That is Cookie Day and Night and Mr. Sen is racing at the back of the field. They head toward the four and it's Royal Ash on an off, off a length lead on the outside and coming down nicely still that Super Alex. Life is Life is right there too. KD Strong watches them from fourth. Then comes Savvy Girl behind them coming on and recovering after that break too. That's Mr. Senator. Then comes uh, She's My Hedge Fund reversing overtaken by Cookie Day and Night and racing at the back of the field. Ella Fortunata but it is still Royal Ash in front and traveling well with Royal Ash. Here come on the outside that Super Alex also coming on Mr. Senator after that bad break. He's really coming down the racetrack, but it's Royal Ash. Keep on turning their back on the inside and coming on to that Cookie Day and Night. It's Royal Ash in front. Cookie Day and Night coming on the inside and still coming to that is a KD is strong, but it's Royal Ash still in front and hanging on to that lead. Here comes Cookie Day and Knight up the rail. Royal Ash, Cookie Day and Knight coming on the rail. Royal Ash and Cookie Day and Knight. They've gone by together. Then comes Mr. Senator. KD Strong and uh, Super Alex back in fifth. Now they're off. First start. Don Almighty gets a good one. Aphelios rushing up on the outside to challenge in between horses. That's True Bravado. And a True Bravado now goes on from Aphelios and the Good Life Racing Wildest of them all. Don Almighty fades back. Phenomenal one and Magical Mood now joining that one. Sniper Man races next as they leave the half mile marker. And behind Sniper Man, that's Duke of Springs trailing the field on the run in the bend toward the final three. True Bravada strides out and opens up some four legs. Being chased all the while by Aphelius now asked to go on the rail. Phenomenal One has made phenomenal progress on the outside. The Good Life is backing out. Magical Mood races up next, but they're into the top of the lane. The one to catch is True Bravada trying to do it. That's the gray Aphelius, the favorite, as they come thundering past the final three sixteenth. And now Aphelius grabs the lead and begins to sprint off. True Bravado in a battle for a minor place. Phenomenal one right alongside and now moving into second. Magical mood on the outside, but the great Aphelios continues to turn on under full power. Inside the final 16th, it is Aphelios coming away on the terrific Tevin Foster easing down in the end. They win by five or six. Phenomenal one second. Magical mood third. Sniper man fourth. Donald Mighty is fifth. Field in line for the Robert Claiming King Derby Senior Memorial Trophy. They're sent off right away as they make their way down the back stretch and head now toward the final six. Storm has blown quickly into that lead. Racing down against the rail, that's a Tigre Express Power just on the outside. These three in a tight cluster. Wayne's Princesses are further three lengths in behind them. Nakamura and uh, Catalina Matt Strides. A break of some three lengths back to Sir John. Colorado Ranger tucked in between horses. Turn on the light racing out wide. Lord of Agilon and Justin Biden race next. Then Secret Traveler and Fly Messenger Fly has no wings at the moment as they leave the half mile and make their way now toward the final three. 
Storm blowing strong on that lead. Leads up by some three lengths. Power continues the chase. A break back of four lengths to Tigre Express. Wins Princess asked to make ground with Catalina Nakamura under a ride. Has several lengths to catch those leaders along with a Colorado Ranger and Justin Biden. But the field have turned for home. They're at the top of the lane and Storm has that lead. Power has completely blown the turn and is on the extreme outside. Three sixteenths of a mile to run. Storm continues to lead over on the rail. Power running wide widest of them all, hanging on for second up for long to catch Storm, and Storm continues to lead from power. In behind them, Justin Biden, Wayne's Princess, and Catalina asked to run on, but Storm inside the final 16th. This is the Robert claiming King Derby Senior Memorial Trophy. They won't stop Storm. Storm wins easily in the end by maybe five over Justin Biden. Then power, Catalina, Nakamura. They're off and racing, a clean break. Sparkles rushing to on the outside, right there too, that's Home Alone. Right against the fence, that's Simply Sensational Sky Rizzy, also in the mix. Just behind them on the rail, that's right in flight. Be always right, rather, always right. Then comes Princess Talisi, Sweet Victory, and uh, racing at the back of the field, that's Lion Charmer. They head toward the uh, seven for a long point, and it is Simply Sensational on that lead. Sky Rizzy tracking in second. Then comes Sparkle, always right, Princess Talisi. Recovering after that bad break, that is a uh, home alone, and uh, coming on to that sweet victory and racing still at the back of the field as they pass the six. That is Lion Charmer. They head toward the uh, five, and Sky Rizzi eking out about a neck lead from on the outside and coming down that spark was eking reverse a bit, but coming back for more though. That's simply sensational. Then comes always right racing in fourth, tracking them in fifth. That is home alone. Then comes the Princess Talisi. Sweet victory and the Lion Charmer racing at the back as they pass the four furlong point. Heading toward the three, and it is a Sparkles on that lead. About a length and a half in front of Always Right, racing in second. Home Alone, hunting down, going down for the hunt into third. Backing out a bit, that Sky Rizzi's Princess Talisi trying to come on. Sweet victory has to do more from here. And also coming on too, that is a Lion Charmer racing at the back of the field. That's simply sensational there at the top of the lane, and it is Sparkles. Here comes Home Alone towards the outside. Home Alone and Sparkles, Sparkles just keeping on right against the rail. Here comes Sweet Victory, gathering the ground on the inside. In the middle, that is Princess Talisi coming to the furlong pole. It's Sparkles, Princess Talisi, and a Sweet Victory right behind them. That's Home Alone and always right, but Sweet Victory begins to get out of the grass. The these coming on to that is Princess Talisi, but Sweet Victory goes on for the victory. Sweet Victory by about a length and a half or two from racing in second that is princess delisi then comes uh, always right and uh Often racing, rejected Roger gets a flyer on the far side, switching across to the middle right there too. That's a legit boss. Right in the middle, that is Strike Smart. Over on the far side, that Huntsman. They're spread right across the track as they make their way, coming out to the shoot to the three furlong point. It is on the far side, that's Huntsman. Right in the middle, that's Kim. And dead center, that's Strike Smart. Also there, that's Box Box, beginning to come on nicely as they make their way and come out to the shoot. They're coming to the two for a long point, and it is Box Box right there too. Princess Amali, also there, that's Rejected Roger. Legit Boss is right there too. Also coming on the far side, that's Strike Smart. They're still wide open. Anybody's race, and they come to the furlong pole, it is Rejected 
rejected Raja, just the leader, and begins to come away. It's rejected Raja, Princess Amale chasing in vain, but it's Prince, it's legit, it's rejected Raja, beginning to pull up Huntsman coming late. It's rejected Raja, beating Huntsman. Then comes uh, Princess Amale, legit boss, and uh, maybe strikes Mark for the fifth. Once again, a very good morning, racing fans. As Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited welcome you to the Caymanus Park racetrack and our off-track betting parlors. In a short while, we will be announcing the program changes, if any. Now we ask you to stand to honor the Jamaica National Anthem. Today's first offers high five wagering along with Reggae 6 and Catch 9. The Reggae 6 has a single winner bonus in excess 2.126 million. The Catch 9 in excess 2.447 million. Up to this time, we have not received any scratches on the program. A race 2. Place Part 8 and Quick 4 both begin. Place Part 8. Single winner bonus in excess of 263,000. Quick 4. Single winner bonus in excess of 700,000. Race 3, that's where the early pick 5 begins. Single winner bonus in excess $2.291 million. Moving on to race 4, that's where the twilight 6 begins. Race 5, late pick 5 begins. Race 6, strike 4 begins race 6. The single winner bonus there in excess of $2.133 million. We also offer high 5 wagering. Moving on to race 7, the Lady Gita Trophy. That's where the late triple begins. Race 8, high 5 wagering. Race 9 offers high 5 wagering. That's it from me for now. We'll back, be back with you later on, myself and Kevin. It's now time to go over to our racing analyst, Mr. Michael Kane, as he tries to help you with your selections, allowing you to leave here with a bag of cash. Over to Mikey.
Remember, gambling is just a game. Choose to gamble responsibly. Set a budget. Avoid chasing losses. And stop gambling when you reach your money limit. For gambling help, call RISE 888-991-4146. A message from the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission. Good day to you, fellow racing fans, and welcome once again to Cabinets Park, home of the Caribbean's number one derby. Hope the Caribbean's fans are busy. We're here for a double header weekend of Thorbid Racing. 19 races on the two day weekend carnival, nine races today, and 10 races on Sunday. And today, we'll be having another leg in the 2024 Road to the Triple Crown, where we have the finish on show with the Thornbird Stakes, and that's going to be the ninth and final on the card. In combination with the Thornbird Stakes, we'll be having the Lady Gita Trophy. That's going to be race number seven, and that's a graded stakes sprint. Six horses will go 12 meters or 64 dollars, 2.5 million in purse there. And the Thornbird Stakes boasts 1.75 million dollars in purse money. Also in combination with the Lady Gita and Thornbird, we'll be having the Thornbird Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. That's going to be race number five. A field of seven will go 1,820 meters or 9 dollars 25 yards with a purse of 1.25 million. And that looks to be an interesting event on paper. All of the races on the card named after members of Toba. That's the Thorbed Owners and Breeders Association. The racetrack is in superb condition, bright and sunny conditions here in St. Catherine, Jamaica. So we're looking forward to some very great Thorbed racing. In the jockeys' colony, we have Tevin Foster in front by some 13 wins. He's on 38 wins. Radish Roman is second on 25, and Radish Roman will return to active competition today after having a recent spill. In third is Robert Haldin with 16 wins. In his fourth is Dane Dawkins with 11 wins. Dane Dawkins now oversees plan his trade. Jason Acosta champion trader has earned 15.581 million in purse and his closest pursuer Gary Sabrati 14 million plus in purse and Anthony News is third with 9.565 million. Carlton Watson champion owner is well out in front 9.161 million in earnings and uh, Oakridge Farms is second with 4.77 million. Ham Stables Limited many time champion breeders they are on 7.66 million in purse earnings and Karen Passard 6.4 million in purse earnings there so great job by Karen Passard to be as close uh, to Ham Stables Limited. The first event, we're 44 minutes to go to post for the first. You have seen right, uh, the time is kind of quite right there, 44 minutes to post. So we're going to be starting a bit earlier today. I would have loved to start an hour earlier, but uh, we're going to go off with a 15 minute extra uh, today so as to get through the races and give you ample time uh, to get your bets in early. Race number one is in order of Richard Zan, Hall of Famer, and he's been honored on October day here at Cayman Spa. The first event is the main condition race for Native Bird Thrills. They go 1,500 meters or seven and a half foot on the purse. It's 1 million and 50,000. Regular six starts here, 3.5 million dollars minimum guarantee payout, and the jackpot is over 2.126 million. The catch line also begins at the first event. Minimum guarantee payout, 500,000, and we have 2.447 million in that single winner jackpot. Of the field of 10, my best four includes two King Pie, five Francis, seven Bredna Boy, and 10 Rosetta. Two, five, seven, and ten are my best four for the Richard Zan. Top selection goes to number seven, Brenda Boy, Tevin Foster, the leading rider. He rides here for Turner Fitzgerald Richards and owner DSTL and Associates. And this Brenda Boy has raced four times and all four occasions finished in third. Third by nine and a quarter minutes on debut to Crown Chaser and Oil Machine. Third by 13 then second time out, beaten by Abba and Kaylin Medley. Third by eight and three quarter minutes. Next time out, beaten by Shannon Star and Captain Spark. Captain Spark came back and won. And in that same event where Captain Spire won, Brenda Boy was served by four and three quarter lengths. Brenda Boy broke slow that day, but made up a lot of ground uh, to be in a prominent position, turning for home and finishing third by four and three quarter lengths. Rosetta was second in that same event, and Rosetta went out the favorite at odds of even money. So there's a rematch here between Rosetta and Brenda Boy. Rosetta has Robert Haldeen for Jason Acosta and Carlton Watson. A very potent combination here at Cayman and Spark. Robert Haldeen. Carlton Watson and Jason Acosta and the combination of Robert Haldine and Jason Acosta not only present on local soil they also combine at Thistledown overseas so wherever you see Robert Haldine and Jason Acosta the important note and uh, add to that mix as well Carlton Watson champion on the last time out we saw Rosetta at odds of even money making a sharp move from the half mile second by head turned for home four lengths clear came to the forum pole second by head and then finished second by two and three quarter lengths to the fast finishing Captain Sparrow and that was at seven furlongs it's now seven and a half furlongs blinkers take it off visor now replaces the blinkers Rosetta 
opens up at even money. And this one is your marginal favorite over Brenda Boy. Just a half a point away, Brenda Boy gets a three to two. Next horse is going to be number two, King Pai, who was second on debut, but in a pedestrian time of 125.2 for six and a half. Four on beat by Don't Tell Lulu. Now, next in town, went off at odds of three to two. On debut, went off at one to five. And King Pai was sold by seven and a quarter lengths, beaten by Jay Spieth and Kaylin Melody. King Pai has rider showman on his return, and he rides for his apprentice master, Anthony Nunes, and owner, Ajax Bahorn. Look for King Pai to be finishing effectively here. And Francis, number five, Rain Lewis riding. He's a champion jockey, rides here for Hall of Fame trainer, Richard Azan. And incidentally, Richard Azan is being honored in race number one, so it would be quite uh, uh, fitting if uh, Francis were to win the race in honor of her trainer. Francis has been well bet on four outings to date, five to two twice, four to five and three to five, but he hasn't delivered as yet. Let's hope that Francis can step up to the plate today and be right there in the thick of things for her Hall of Fame trainer. Make it 7-10-2-5 in the Richard Design, and that's Brenda Boy to get a better of Rosetta, King Pai, and Francis. Both or major exotic majors begin in the first, Rega 6 and Catch 9, the Clash of the Titans, so to speak. Let's take a look at my Rega 6 and Catch 9 tickets for our 9 risk card. Starting off in the first event with the aforementioned quartet of interest, 2, 5, 7, and 10, King Pai Francis, Brenda Boy, and Rosetta. Race number two, in order of Patrick Smelly, we're going to go 1, 2, 4, and 5, Rocket Lily, Victor's Medallion, Rusty, and Queen Zan. Race number three, 4, Fitzroy Glispy, and Banky number four, Jaguar. Race number four, in order of Carlton Watson, champion owner, going to go 3, 6, and 7, she's a Mirage. Blinking Light and Brit Brian Express. Race number five is the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy, Toba. We're going to go one, three, five, and six. Sunset Silhouette, Sunny and Chippy, All for Love, and Rainsville. And race number six, the cash out leg of the Rega Six, the Willis Racing Stable at Bombay. We're making it one, five, eight, and 12. Benson, Bad Investment, Lambo Girl, and So Wrong Done. 7,680 will get you my Rega Six ticket. Robert Darby's Rega 6 starts off with 2, 4, 5, 7, and 10. Race number 2, 1, 4, and 5. Race number 3, Robert says 4 and 6. Race 4, Robert goes 3 and 7. Race number 5, Robert says 1, 2, 5, and 6. And race number 6, a cash out leg of the Rega 6, 1, 5, and 12. Robert Darby's Rega 6 ticket, 7,200. A catch 9 starts off in the first event. Got to go... 2, 7, and 10. I always tell you about the challenge with the catch time. You have three additional races, and as such, we can't go as wide on um, many legs on the catch time. So we have to narrow down those selections to be able to meet the budget, so to speak. Starting off in race number one with numbers 2, 7, and 10. King, Pie, Brenda, Boy, and Rosetta. Race number two, I'm going to go 1, 4, and 5. Rocket Lily, Rusty, and Queen Zan. Race three, maintaining that single. Number four, Jaguar. Race number four, going to go 3 and 7. She's a Mirage versus Brit Brian Express. Race number five, one, three, and six. Sunset Silhouette, Sunny T and Chippy. Rainsville. Race number six, one, eight, and 12. Benson, Lambo Girl, and Sir Wang Don. Race number seven, the Lady Gita Trophy. I'm banking on Desert of Malibu, number six. Race number eight for Carl Samuda of Atomic of Fame. Five, 12, and 13, Bulletproof Coffee. Burning Valor, Fly Blue Jet. And race number nine, the Thornbird Stakes, the 31st running of the Thornbird Stakes. Make it four, eight, and nine. Run, Julie, run. Mystery and Banadura. 7,290 will get you my Catch 9 ticket. And kindly note that tomorrow we'll be having Monday to appear to the Catch 9. So it's your last chance to hit the jackpot on your lonesome today with the Catch 9. Robert Abbey's Catch 9 starts off with two and five. One, four, and five. Four, and six. Three, and seven. Two, five, and six. 5 and 12, race number 7, 5 and 6, race 8, 5 and 10, and race number 9, Robert says 4 and 9, 5,760 will get you Robert Darby's Catch 9. Best of luck wagering our Catch 9 and Reggae 6, the clash of the titans, so to speak, in terms of exotic wager opportunities, and they both begin here in race number 1, so be on your P's and Q's. The best thing is to start. If you don't start, you can't finish. The start is important, just as the finish and the in-between legs as well. So be on your best handicapping skills for the first event of nine. Race number two is for Patrick Smelly, being ordered as uh, a part of Toba, Forward Owners and Breeders Association. We have a field of five. They go 1,100 meters or five and a half furlongs. Race number two is a claiming contest for 400,000 of the 300,000 claimers. And uh, we start our catch, well, our 
Place spot eight here. Catch nine starts in race number one. The place spot eight begins in race number two. Single with a bonus over 263,000. A quarter of a million minimum guarantee payout. And the quick four starts in race number two as well. Single with a bonus over 700,000. And a quarter of a million minimum guarantee payout. A small field of five. And they'll go this 1,100 meter sprint. Their speed from the one. Rocket Lily. Their speed from number five. Queen Zan. They're likely to be disputing the lead here. And they could very well find themselves in a speed duel. Now, of the others... Who will be able to get them first? Well, maybe Rusty come off the break. And uh, Rusty, his form looks quite appealing here. Last race on the 23rd of December, when finishing second by eight and three quarter lengths of Bridal Blush, and prior to that third by ten and a half lengths behind one like it. Now, he's racing here among 400,000 claimers without a tag, given that he's a six year old up, non real four. And uh, the others basically uh, aren't on tags either. So uh, the tag really doesn't apply here. They're all six year olds and up, non winners of four. Queen's Anne, which Shane Richardson ride in for Trader Bar Barrington Bernard. This one has speed, and the speedy inside horse is Rocket Lily. So, Radish Roman rides well from in front, and once uh, this Rocket Lily gets a good break, we should see Rocket Lily in front, but she's going to be haunted by Queen Zan. Could they pave the way for Rusty from off the pace? He's racing for the first time this year, so it makes his seasonal debut. So, Rusty, hopefully, he won't be too rusty, and the champion jockey, Ray Lewis, riding there for Trader Patrick Lynch should be right there in the thick of things throughout. And number two, Victor's Medallion. Also has some pace, not as speedy as um, Queen Zan and Rock Lily, but look for Queen, that's uh, Victor's Medallion, uh, to be close by to Queen Zan and Rock Lily in this second event. A nice looking sprint in the offing for race number two. I'm going to go one, five, four, and two as my order of preference. It's in honor of Patrick Smelly. Make it Rock Lily to get the better of Queen Zan, Rusty, and Victoria's Medallion. Race number three is next. This is for Fisio Grisby, more popularly known as Pumpkin, and he's a former top flight rider here at Cape Adams Park. He's now a trainer. He's also an owner and breeder. Fisio Grisby, more popularly known as Pumpkin, been honored in the third event. Restricted allowance three for native bread for five years and up, nuns of four, and importees five years and up, nuns of three, a feed of six. Go poster to start or early pick five. 2.291 billion in that. Single with a bonus and the minimum guarantee paid for your early pick five is a quarter of a million. They go 1,000 meters round. Number four, Jaguar. Where will they get back to Jaguar? Robert Haldane riding for Trader Rowan Matthew. And this one led for the first six furlongs in that six and a half furlong contest and last was just beaten within shades of the wire by Great Wayne. Prior to that, third by half lead over five furlongs straight, beaten by Posting already and Great Wayne. So now cutting back from six and a half furlongs to five furlongs round and not seeing any speed that can out, out speed Jaguar. So Jaguar should go in front and should make all the running. Tadona has some pace and speed, but has been outsped by Jaguar on numerous occasions. And we have the likes of She's Fantastic also possesses speed. And Salad also has some uh, late pace as well. So things are shaping up very, very well here for Jaguar in race number three. And this is my single on my regular six as well as my catch nine. Legal Bomb showed some pace last time out in that same pose and already great win Jaguar event but appears to be likely to be out-sprinted here by Jaguar and the other. So take it number four, Jaguar, as my firm selection here in the third. For second, number six, Talona for third, number two. She's fantastic for fourth. Number five, Legal Bomb. The fourth event is next. It's for Carlton Watson champion owner. Twine at six starts here. Minimum guarantee pay of 3.5 million. And we have a restricted allowance five contest for native bred four years, nuns of two, and imported four years and up maidens. The purse is 750,000. They go 1,000 meters round. Of the field of seven, I've narrowed it down to two, Mr. Wonderful. Three, She's a Mirage. Six, Blinking Light. And seven, Brit Brian Express. Two, three, six, and seven appear to be the right quartet from which the dividends should be comprised of here when the race is complete. And those dividends, of course, win, place, exacta, trifecta. And the start of your double as well. And this is going to be the cash out leg of the triple sequence races two, three, and four. Number seven, Brit Brian Express, recent pipe opener, racing for the first time in just about five months, was sold by five lengths of Bulletproof Coffee and Manushi over a thousand meters straight. Written that day by Jawani Forbes, more popular known as Allen. It's now Tevin Foster, the leading rider that picks up the mount, replacing Jawani Forbes, now coming around the bend and having strip fitter. Brit Brian Express looks likely to fight out the finish here. Number three is She's a Raj, uncovered her well being last time out at 46 to 1, led for most of the way. And was just beaten inside the final 25 yards by Noble Attitude, the favorite. So having exposed their well-being, Josue Osorio maintains both for Jason Acosta and Elizabeth Acosta. She's a mirage, has prospects of making all the running here. Cutting back from six furlongs 
to five for those round. Mr. Wonderful has pace, but he has been outspread since stepping up the nuns of two. One by a neck in 110 flat for a five and a half front of beating Lady Randallar and Crucial Alexia. That came in an upset victory at 14 to 1 on the 4th of November last year. But since stepping up, he has raced five times at non two and has been found wanting and likely to be found wanting here among the seasoned non of two campaigners. Number six is Blinking Light, Ren Lucy champion jockey Roger Gary Griffiths has been prominent at this non two level for some time now. And uh, he clearly has caught the pace of this group. So Blinking Light with the champion jockey aboard is expected to deliver a major effort here in race number four. Got to go seven, three, six, and two. Brit Byron Express to get the better of She's a Barrage. Blinking Knight and Mr. Wonderful. The fourth event starts at Twilight Six. Minimum guarantee paid 3.5 billion. That minimum guarantee paid will be intact for the entire month of April. And so too, that minimum guarantee paid of 3.5 million is intact for the entire month of April for your Reggae Six. Let's take a look at my Twilight Six ticket for the Thorbit Owners and Breeders Association card in combination with the Lady Gita as well as the Thornbird Six. Started off in race number four with three, six, and seven. She's a Barrage, Blinking Light, and Brit Brian Express. Race number five, the Thorbet Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy, Toba. Gonna go one, three, five, and six. Sunset Silhouette, Sunny Tain, Chippy, All for Love, and Rainsville. Race number six is for Wheelers Racing Stable at Bombay. Gonna go one, five, eight, and 12. Benson, Bad Investment, Lambo Girl, and Sir Wong Don. Race number seven, I'm banking on number six. Desert of Malibu and race 7 is the Lady Gita Trophy. Race number 8, 5, 10, 12, and 13. And race 8 is in honor of Carl Samuda of Atomica fame. He's a breeder of Atomica. And that brood mare, Honky Tonkville. What a brood mare to produce such a magnificent thoroughbred, Atomica, or current horse of the year. Race 8, 5, 10, 12, and 13. Bulletproof Coffee from Sheer to Ben, Burning Valor, and Fly Blue Jet. Race number 9, the Thornbird Stakes. The 31st running of the Thornbird Stakes. Closing up the Twilight Six. With 4, 8, 9, and 10, Ron Julie Run, Miss Terry Banadura, and Midnight Flight. 7,680 will get you my Twilight 6. Robert Darby's Twilight 6 starts off in race 4 with 3 and 7. She's a Mirage and Ryan Express. Race number 5, Robert says 1, 2, 5, and 6. And that's Toba, the fifth event. 1, 2, 5, and 6. Race number 6, Robert goes 1, 5, and 12. And race 7, the Lady Gita, Robert says 5 and 6. Mahogany versus Desert of Malibu. And race number 8, 5, 10, and 13. Race number nine, four, eight, and nine. 4,320 will get you Robert Darby's Twilight Six. Best of luck, wager on a Twilight Six on the nine race card. The fifth event is next. It's so Thorbet Owners and Breeders Association of the Big Trophy. A field of seven will go 1,820 meters of nine, 425 yards of Spectator Street. As this event begins right in front of the grandstands, always a very captivating sight to see the runners up close and in person as they parade behind the starting gates at the 25 yard marker. And indeed, when they break off from the starting gate and their riders just in for good early position, go into that clubhouse turn and tell you, no matter how many times I'm at Kimberley's Park, I've never been so captivated at any other point of the racetrack as the ninth foot on a 25-yard start. Always quite, uh, uh, quite, quite entertaining to see the horses up close and in person as they parade and. Uh, Get ready to start the 9 and 25 contest. A field of seven, we'll start late pick five here. Quarter of a minute minimum guarantee payout. One, three, five, and six are my best four. Sunset, Silhouette, Sunny T, and Chippy. All for love. And Rainsville, one, three, five, and six. The one to beat is going to be number six, Rainsville. Steps down from open allowance, racing the St. Cecilia, the chairman's trophy. The last two outings, and it was not totally disgraced. Fifth by 15 on the quarter length, running on. Behind Desert of Malibu, further on beyond, and a gift from Ben. Prior to that, four by 40 lengths. To is that a fact, Atomica and rough entry that came in the Chairman's Trophy. And three starts are back, fourth by 11 and a half lengths to Sablemate, Perfect Pro. Freedom Street was second, and Laban, another Sablemate was third. So Rainsville now back down to Owen Hit Allowance. Tevin Foster picks up the mount for Hall of Fame trainer Richard Azan. He replaces Delroy Bihari in the side. Delroy Bihari was aboard Rainsville last time out. The weight is 57 kilos. The trip is right up, up his street, 9 and 25. And the last time Rainsville won was at 9 and 25 yards. So he gets the vote here in the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. Number three is Sonny and Chippy, disappointed last time out. Notably, was ridden by Tevin Foster on his last three appearances. As a matter of fact, has been ridden by Tevin Foster six of the last seven outings. Went up at 75 last time out, slow the stride and didn't uh, do much. Fought by nine lengths to Mamma Mia, get a Pepsi and all for love. Radish Roman, notably, is the rider aboard Sonny and Chippy, replacing Tevin Foster. Tevin Foster clearly has opted for Rainsville, so look for Rainsville 
and Sunti and Chippy uh, to bat in the way all the way through here. Number one, Sunset Silhouette ran well over five straight last time, out beaten by Volatility and Champion Bubbler. Five straight, not the best trip for this mare. She's by a Royal Minister out of the dam. Aufa, that makes a half sister to none other than she's a man eater. And this Sunset Silhouette has been very, very uh, prominent at Overnight Alone so far. Hasn't won at Overnight yet. But based on that third by a length and a quarter over the straight last time out, Sunset Silhouette should definitely run extremely well here. Now going two turns. And number five is All for Love. Third by five and a half lengths last time up behind Mamma Mia and get a Pepsi. That was at seven and a half furlows. Now nine furlows at 25 yards. I'm expecting a big run here from All for Love. Six time champion jockey Omar Walker picks up the mount for a trader. Gary Sabrati. Gotta go six, three, one, five in race number five. And that's Brainsville to get a better off Sunny T and Chippy. Sunset Silhouette. All for Love. Race 6 is next. We start the strike four here. Minimum guarantee paid is half a million. 2.133 million in that single with a bonus. And we have a feed of 16. Maximum feed of 16. It's going to be a capital charge for the Wheelies Racing Stable at Bombay. Maiden condition race for four years without the purse. 730,000. My best four in the sixth event includes one Benson, five bad investment, eight Lambo Girl, and 12 Sir Wong Don. One, five, eight, and 12. Now, Sir Wong Don. Last time out, was fought by nine and a half lengths over seven furlongs, beat by Cosmic Force and Glitter and Magnum. Dimitri P was third, and I sure wish I had the replay to show you uh, of the 16th of March race, where Sir Wang Don turned for home second by neck. And I had a look at this replay myself, and I saw where Sir Wang Don was being guided gently uh, from the quarter pole to the furlong pole, and uh, finished fought by nine and a half lengths. And I made a note of that, and I said, well, Next time out, I see Sir Wong Dunn. I'm going to work at Sir Wong Dunn. Well, here comes the next time out. Sir Wong Dunn has Natalie Berger maintained the ball here for Trader Patrick Fong. Now over the street, Sir Wong Dunn can definitely get the job done here. Was well, second, two starts are back by four ends behind Xylophonic Steel and did turn a length and three quarters in front of Benson. Three starts are back, second by three quarters of a length, beaten by Spitzen Khan. And in turn was seven and a quarter length of Sugar Sugar, who was third. Sugar Sugar has come back and won since. So Sir Wang Dan, John Post 12, in a feed of 16. I'm expecting him to live bang in contention from the word go. Lamba Girl number 8, showed pace last week when finishing 8th down the track, beaten by Bit Strike, by an investment and Dimitri, but showed good pace, second by half a length at the half mile, and then weakening thereafter. Lamba Girl's best efforts have been over the straight course. So John Post eight in a feed of 16. Tongue tie removed by Trader Wilfred Chin. Richard Henry picks up the mount once again. I'm expecting Lamba Girl to be battling away from the word go. Towards the inside, Benson. Last time out, hopped at the start. And I also sure wish I had this replay to show you the start of Benson. Well, maybe next week we have some replays. And uh, this one was started by five and a half lengths in that event won by Zane's Princess over Cosmic Force. Hopped at the start. Three to five. Still was in front at the two for them point. First by neck. And then weakening third by five and a half length. Not the best draw. One in a field of 16 over the straight. So things are not necessarily in favor of Benson here. But he has a lot of scope to improve. Has only raced twice. Has shown good enough pace and speed. He'll have first time LASIK administered today. So I'm looking forward to Benson with Omar Spencer. Also known as Turtle back in the saddle. For Trina Fitzsum Williams, more popular known as Features. Looking for this one to be banned contention from the word go. Number five is bad investment. Ran second last week Saturday by Blitz Strike. Returns quickly. Now over the straight. May not be the best position for him, but let's see. He has finished second on three consecutive races. Coming to this second on four of the last five outings. So chances are he could finish second again. I'm taking 12 8 one, five as my order of preference in the Willis Racing Stable at Bombay. Sir Wang Dan to get a better of Lambo Girl, Benson, and Bad Investment. Race number seven is the Lady Gita Trophy, a grade one event. Graded stakes open the dance contest for three and up. The purse is 2.5 million. A field of six will go 1,200 meters or six furlongs. Last triple starts here. Minimum guaranteed payout is 400,000. And we have Desert of Malibu back in action. She has raced locally eight times. She has won seven times, but was disqualified on one of those victories. So she has passed the front, the, the passed the post in front, seven of eight times. And the race that she lost totally was when she reared at the gate on the 17th of February over the straight course. You can't rear the gate over the straight and recover unless you're going to be raced against horses far inferior to you. So reared at the gate, 
and never recovered four by seven and a half lengths in the end. And the race was won by sensational move. Stable mate of Desert of Malibu. Dane Dawkins, who rode Desert of Malibu to victory on five occasions, came off Desert of Malibu and went on sensational move. And I'm still kicking myself, basically, for not following that observation and saying that I can't mark Desert of Malibu and don't mark sensational move. And uh, therein lies the tale. So, Desert of Malibu, Reddish Roman. He picks up the mount once again. Got a flying start last time out. Didn't eradicate any at all. And won easily over six and a half furlongs. 119 four. Beat him further on beyond and a gift from Ben. All things being well. This was Malibu. Will get a good break again. And she'll win again. She's at 53.5. She's getting three and a half kilos from Mahogany. Mahogany, one of our superstars here at Cayman Spark. A big time performer. Has won 17 races from 30 starts. Five seconds and three thirds. And Mahogany has gone within shades of three track records here. At the park, six and a half furlongs, eight and a half furlongs, and seven and a half furlongs. So he's indeed a truly classy performer. Ray Lewis, the champion jockey, picks up the mount for Ian Passard. He makes his seasonal debut. Mahogany, he's now seven years old, getting on in years. But he is a big time performer, and we definitely want to see him at his best this year to be able to compete at the highest level. Mahogany, I'm expecting to be a bit uh, on the not so sharp side, given that he's just running of a four-month break. So we're working with the race fit, talented, awesome talent as well, of Desert of Malibu to get the better of Mahogany. And this looks like an ice-cold exactor. Could it be in the Lady Gita Trophy? Yellowstone number three, first by five and a quarter lengths last time up, beat Madden Sunshine and Press Conference, has Paul Francis, replacing Jordan Barge, riding here for trainer Alfred Brown. Yellowstone has pace and speed, and clearly he's gonna make his presence felt here. And also having good pace and speed, a gift from Ben who more than likely will be outclassed by the principals here. Got to go 6-5-3-1 in the Lady Eater Trophy. Desert of Malibu to get the better of Mahogany, Yellowstone, and a gift from Ben. Race number eight is next. We have uh, a field of 13 going 6 4 on 1,200 meters. It's for Carl Samuda of Atomica fame. It's her stick to the lounge four for native bread fours and up nuns of three and importees four years and up. Nuns of two with a purse $780,000. My best four includes five, Bulletproof Coffee, 10 from Sheer to Ben, 12, Burning Valor, and 13, Fly Blue Jet, 5, 10, 12, and 13. And of that quartet, I prefer Bulletproof Coffee and Fly Blue Jet. And incidentally, they're both owned by our chairman at Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited, Solomon Sharp. Bulletproof Coffee last time out, four and a half lengths clear of Manushi over the street, coming off a one year break and looked a vast improved thoroughbred. Jerome Innes, also known as Cranberry, maintains the mount. Bulletproof Coffee can definitely make it two wins in a row. The other Solomon Sharp horse trained by Philip Fiano D is Fly Blue Jet. And this one, six by three and a half lengths last time out at even money didn't justify the favoritism. Three starter back, two to one favorite. Six by seven and a half lengths did not justify the favoritism. But four starter back was a winner at six to five, making all the running at five and a half furlongs. On his bonnings picks up the mount. He was aboard to victory on the 20th of January. Fly Blue Jet can definitely land in the winner's enclosure as well. So the Solomon Sharp Pier have a very powerful hand here. Bulletproof Coffee trained by Owen Sharp and Flyable Jet trained by Philip Fiano D. Burning Valor showed good pace last time out over the straight. Actually led at Furlong Pole, third by the quarter in the end behind California Gold. James was second. Burning Valor from a similar approach could very well fight at the finish. And from Sheer to Ben, fourth in that same event, won by Oasis Jack in 58.3. From Sheer to Ben's final time worked out to be 59.3. The same time, which was run by California Gold, beating Burning Valor. So an interesting match up here based on times between from Sheer to Ben and Burning Valor. Going 5, 13, 12, and 10 as my order of preference. Bulletproof Coffee over Fly Blue Jet. Burning Valor and from Sheer to Ben. The ninth and final is going to be the 31st running of the Thornbird Stakes. A field of 15 fillies will go 1,400 meters or 7 furlongs. The purse 1.75 million. And this is... Going to be the second leg of the major preps for the classics for the Phillies. The first leg, of course, was the Hotline Stakes recently, which was won by Banadura. And this, of course, the second leg, the Thornbird Stakes. And after the Thornbird Stakes, the next major prep is going to be the Portmore for the Phillies. 1.75 million in purse for the Thornbird Stakes. Of the field of 14, I prefer numbers 4, Run Julie Run, 8, Miss Cherry, 9, Banadura, and 10. Midnight Flight, 4, 8, 9, and 10 appear to be the right four here 
And number four is run junior run beaten last two times by Colts and Geldings. Was second by two and a half lengths, interested times ahead in the Jamaica Two Year Stakes on Boxing Day. Came back on her seasonal debut on the 24th of February, third by four and three quarter lengths to the importee. Amazing force. Has worked well since five and a half followers with 108, four by 102, two. Six time champion Omar Walker maintains them out for the sixth consecutive occasion for trader Ian Passard. Blinkers have been removed. Last time what the blinkers were fitted for the first time and apparently did not have its desired effect. So they have been taken off and run due to run. Now back among Phyllis Only after racing against Colts and Geldings for her last two. Prior to her last two outings, she was beaten by the undefeated imported Philly Digital One, beaten twice by Digital One. So this run Julie run appears to be getting a class relief here somewhat. Number eight is Miss Sherry, a half sister to none other than Mojito, who won the 2000 Guinness and also won the Kingston as well as the Prince Consort last year. So she's bred in the purple out of the Zanjiro Dam, 50 shades of rain. Has tongue tie and figure it, make the tongue tie on and the figure it off. Change of equipment here by Hall of Fame trader Richard Azan. Champion jockey Ray Lewis picks up the mount. Mystery sent off the two to one lukewarm favorite in the Jamaica Two Stakes, beaten by interesting times ahead, Ron Jude Run and all. And last time out on her seasonal debut in the Hotline Stakes was actually sent off the favorite at eight to five, beaten to four by six and three quarter against the Banadura Crypto Girl and come home to me. So look for Mystery now at seven furlongs to be that much more a danger to all and sundry. Banadura won the Hotline Stakes, was my top choice and won by two and a half lengths in a grinding victory over Crypto Girl. Now, it was rated well just behind Crypto Girl before pouncing at the front on pole and picking up the lead and going off the win by two and a half lengths. Crypto Girl came back as a holding favorite the next race, the R2, and was beaten by Oh So Smart. So I'm not going to give much credit to Banadura beating Crypto Girl. Now, up against the best fillies in the land in the Thornbird Six, was beaten out of sight. In that Jamaica two year stakes, where Ron Judy run a second. Ron Judy run breezed past Banadura, approaching the three forum point. So Banadura is going to have some running to do to get the better of Ron Judy run this time around. And number 10 is Midnight Flight, somewhat of an unknown quantity. Was a five and a half length winner, romped on debut at six to five, all the rage. Rin by Philip Parchment for trainer Don Von Plumber. Matthew Bennett now picks up the mount. It's second time late six of Midnight Flight. How good is his Midnight Flight? We'll find out a little bit later on. Has worked well since her debut victory. Strode six for us at 120 and 250 of a second. So midnight flight will certainly keep on the right side. Run, Julie, run to win the 31st running of the Thornbird Stakes. And get the better of Mystery, Banadura, and Midnight Flight. Four, eight, nine, and ten in the ninth and final. That's my perception on the possible outcomes of our nine races to run here today at Cape Spark. And I sincerely hope that that analysis will better help you to make your decisions and guide you uh, to come out a winner at the end of today's race. And have a great day waiting here at Cape Park. All the OTBs are and wide as well as on the Embed platform, Narabet, Express Bet, the Woodbine Mobile Team platform also on FanDuel. Have a great day wagering, Cape Manas, and you have 14 minutes on the board. Get those waiters on early. And best of fortune.
Hello and welcome. <laughs> and I have exciting news for you today because as many of you probably already know, and if you manage to throw away your phone and don't have any communication with the rest of the world, you're now going to find out that you can log on to kmanusbet.com. That's kmanusbet.com. And you will be able to sign up and create an account, and you will be able to make your fixed odds wagers online. And not only will you be able to bet um, fixed odds on Caymanus Park, there's a host of US tracks, that's, that's correct, North American tracks, that you will be able to bet fixed odds on. And even better than that, you will be able to buy accumulators with these North American tracks and your horses at Caymanus Park as well. So very exciting things coming. Um, we're doing a soft launch for this, so it will, we will welcome your feedback on the platform. And of course, it will be a little process as we fine tune and improve everything to come with a great final product. But you can start going on to kmanusbet.com and create your fixed odds account, and you can bet online. You'll be able to fund your account by um, going to the fixed odds tellers at the track. And you may also use bank transfer. But when you go online on the website, you'll see further details. That's kmanusbet.com and sign up for your fixed odds betting account. And like I said, you'll be able to have accumulators with foreign tracks and kmanus. And there'll be more exciting things to come as time goes on. So that's really my important announcement to you guys before we start the races today. So on to the first race. Um, Actually, I'm just so excited about the launch of the online betting that I don't even know what to tell you. But number 10, Rosetta, is selling a lot, um, currently at $2.30. And um, Brenda Boy is selling a lot as well. Um, as far as the late move, the big movers later on in the card, um, race six, number 13, um, the first time a blinding light. That one is taking a lot of money. And um, some interesting betting coming in in the, in the big races. Of course, the last race with with the three-year-old, the Thornbird Stakes, but more, more on that later on in the day. But my real important message to you guys, get on kmanusbet.com and start setting up your online accounts and then get your IDs ready. That's a government-issued ID and a proof of address, like a utility bill. Those will be required for you to be able to fund your accounts and to start betting. So that's it for the from the Fixers windows for race one here. Runners are in the paddock. This is race number one. This is where the Reggae 6 and Catch 9 begin. Reggae 6 approaching 5.5 million. Jackfoot bonus in excess $2 million. And the Catch 9 just under a $1 million. And it's the Jackfoot bonus in excess or just under $2.5 million. Get your bets on Reggae 6, Catch 9. A very good betting one. That's the first at Caymanus Park.
Horses take the track for the first, named for Richard Azan. It's a maiden condition race for native bred three-year-olds, the distance 1,500 metres or seven and a half furlongs. We're waiting on the weight changes. We've not received them as yet. As soon as we have them, you will have them. Wagering offered on double event, exacta, quinella trifecta, superfecta, high five, rolling triple. This is where the reggae six and the catch nine both begin. Reggae six, two million, one twenty-six plus in the single winner. Two million, four hundred forty-seven thousand plus in the catch nine single winner. Reggae six, arriving at almost six million, catch nine heading for 1.2 on its way to 1.5. You have four minutes to get it there. So the runners are heading to post. Runners heading to post for the first and the Reggae 6 approaching $7 million. The single winner bonus in excess $2 million and the Catch 9, wow, approaching $1.5 million. The Catch 9, a single winner bonus, just under $2.5 million. Get your bets on as the runners are heading to post. For our racing fans, and welcome to Cabinets Park, home of the Caribbean's number one derby, home of the Caribbean's finest thoroughbreds. And we're here for the 31st running of the Thornbird Stakes. The 2024 road to the Triple Crown continues, and we also have the Lady Gita as well as the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders of Association. Make that Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. Uh, those are the three features on the card, and all of the races named after members of the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association. Horse on to the big gate for race number one is for Richard Zan. He's a Hall of Fame trainer as well. And we have 
a field of 10. The, the favorite at 45 is number 10, Rosetta. It's 2 to 1, number 7. Brenda Boyer, 95, number 2, King Pie. And those horses are responsible for the bulk of the betting. Reggae 6 pool, 6.5 million. Catch 9 pool, 1.3 million. My order of preference for the first, 7, 10, 2, and 5. And that's Brenda Boyer to get the better of Rosetta, King Pie, and Francis. Horses approaching the starting gate. Limited time remains. Best of luck. High five wagering approaching 350,000. Your high five pool on its way to 350,000. The catch nine heading to 1.5 million and the reggae six on its way to $7 million. Runners are arriving at the post. Get your bets on. Here are the away changes race one. Number three, Design Diva, goes with 51.5 or 114 pounds. Four, The Soul Warrior, 52.5 or 116 pounds. Nine, Bull Shadow, 55 or 121. Zero on the board, get your wagers on. Reggae six, heading for seven. Catch nine on its way to 1.5. Get your wagers on. You're running out of time. They're now closing up the front of the gates in preparation for loading. As the Reggae 6 continues to head for 8 million, the Catch 9 getting closer to 1.5. Loading up, about to begin, riders adjusting their goggles as they prepare to begin the loading up procedure. This is the first of nine. Aim for Richard Azan. Horses now loading. First one in, Papi Don. 
Pappy down in at gate one. Design Diva lining up for three. King Pi walking towards two. So loading up on the way, Reggae 6 continues to head for 8 million. Catch 9 knocking on the door of 5 million. So Catch 9 on its way to 1.5. Design Diva lining up for 3. They've opened the front of it. Rider coming off. That's Roger Hewitt. So loading up on the way, Design Diva is in, Hewitt will have a seat. King Pi goes in, currently at 9 to 5 in the betting, the Soul Warrior joins them at 4. Solo Black coming into it. Solo Black, the outer at 99 to 1. Longest shot on the board. Francis slots into five. And now try with the seven, Brenda Boy. Brenda Boy's in. Up goes the rider. Bull Shadow could be next at nine. Bull Shadow is locked away. The favorite Rosetta coming into ten. And then we'll wait on Indestructible to load at six. Still waiting on Rosetta, the mount of Robert Hallidine. Rosetta now pulled in. Final one. The load at six. That's indestructible with Uvil Pinnock. So indestructible, behaving pretty badly behind the gates. They try again. This time indestructible has gone in. Rider climbing aboard. Seven and a half furlongs, fifteen hundred meters. It's the Richard Azan. They're ready. They're off for the first of nine. Fair start. King Pi just a bit tardy at it. Rosetta racing down on the outside. Francis is moving in between horses as they make their way down the back stretch and head toward the sixth. They're just about to arrive at the sixth for a long point, and Francis has that lead from Indestructible and the Soul Warrior. Papi Don has made good progress right there on the rail. Rosetta moving through horses toward the outside. That's Bold Shadow. These in a very tight grouping. Papi Don, we have hit a speed bump as they leave the five and fades back through the field. Uh, joined on the outside by Brenda Boy, now asked to go by the rider. King Pi races several lengths off that lead. Design Diva follows up. And at the back of the field in the blue silks, that's Soda Black as they have left the half mile and the kick away now passing the 716. Still a battle up front. Francis continues to hold a narrow lead. Bold Shadow now attacking on the outside. Indestructible race in their slipstream, drafting in behind them. That's the favorite. Rosetta now asked to go as they arrive at the 516th, and Francis now tries to slip away from them. Bold Shadow continues the chase. Rosetta will cover to the lane out three wide, but it is Francis continuing to chart the course. They race past the quarter pole and make their way now toward the final 316th, and Francis begins to open the gap. Rosetta is racing down on the outside. King Pi has nothing at the moment, but Francis maintains that lead without for a long to run. Can they catch Francis? The favorite Rosetta now lengthening stride, but Francis continues to prove slippery as an eel inside the final 16. It's Francis out in front. They're not going to stop Francis and Rian Lewis. Action pack. Rian Lewis wins by maybe four or five over Rosetta. Uh, then King Pai, indestructible, and Brenda Boy.
<laughs> the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number one, the Richard Azan. Uh, number five, Francis. The three-year-old Bay Philly by Savoy Stomp. Jazzy Jet by Al River Cat. Brett Richard Azan and Edison Chai. Oh, Naya, trade Richard Azan, the winning rider, the champion jockey, action pack, Rain Lewis. The groom, Raverton Nelson. Second, uh, number 10, Rosetta. Uh, third, number 2, King Pie. Fourth, uh, number 6, Indestructible. And uh, fifth, uh, number 7, Brenda Boy. Final time for 7.5 furlongs, 137 and 1. They're off for the first of nine. Fair start. King Pie just a bit tardy at it. Rosetta racing down on the outside. Francis is moving in between horses as they make their way down the back stretch and head toward the sixth. They're just about to arrive at the sixth furlong point, and Francis has that lead from Indestructible and the Soul Warrior. Pappy Don has made good progress right there on the rail. Rosetta moving through horses toward the outside. That's Bold Shadow. These in a very tight grouping. Pappy Don, we have hit a speed bump as they leave the five and fades back through the field. Uh, joined on the outside by Brenda Boy, now asked to go by the rider. King Pie races several lengths off that lead. Design Diva follows up. And at the back of the field in the blue silks, that's Soda Black as they have left the half mile and the kick away now passing the 716. Still a battle up front. Francis continues to hold a narrow lead. Bold Shadow now attacking on the outside. Indestructible race in their slipstream, drafting in behind them. That's the favorite. Rosetta now asked to go as they arrive at the 516th, and Francis now tries to slip away from them. Bold Shadow continues the chase. Rosetta will come into the lane out three wide, but it is Francis continuing to chart the course. They race past the quarter pole and make their way now toward the final 316th, and Francis begins to open the gap. Rosetta is racing down on the outside. King Pie has nothing at the moment, but Francis maintains that lead without for long to run. Can they catch Francis? The favorite Rosetta now lengthening stride, but Francis continues to prove slippery as an eel inside the final 16. It's Francis out in front. They're not going to stop Francis and Rian Lewis. Action pack. Rian Lewis wins by maybe four or five over Rosetta. Uh, then King Pai, indestructible, and Brenda Boy.
Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Richard Azan. Making the presentation, the trainer Richard Azan, and he will present to Monique Azan. For first place, there'll also be a voucher for four bags of feed from Hypro. Uh, two Burger King vouchers. A sheet set, LPSR. And a gift basket courtesy of Cal's and Grace Foods. That's for the first place. Congratulations to the winning connections. Race number one, the Richard Azan. For second and third place finishers, you'll receive two bags of feed, courtesy of gift voucher for two bags of feed, courtesy of iPro, a Burger King voucher for second and a third, and that can be collected at the director's box. So that's the second and third place finishers. You'll receive two bags of feed, gift vouchers for two bags of feed, Burger King vouchers. And that can be connect, collected at the director's box. I want to thank the following sponsors, High Pro Feeds, Help PSR, Burger King, Cal's Distributors, and Grace Foods for their kind sponsorship. Result of the first, our official horses to the testing barn. Five, Francis, six, indestructible. Five and six both go to the testing barn. Francis, 752 to win, 140 to place. Second, 10, Rosetta, 110. Third, two, King Pie, 118. Fourth, six, indestructible. Fifth, seven, Brenda Boy. Exacto, 1,444. Quinella, 870. Trifecta, 1,866. Superfecta, 5,502. 32 high fives, 7,587. Splits, 24-4, 48-1, They raced 1,500 meters or 7.5 furlongs in 137-1. The margins, 4 and 3 quarters by 3. Remember, gambling is just a game. Choose to gamble responsibly. Set a budget. Avoid chasing losses. And stop gambling when you reach your money limit. For gambling help, call RISE. 888-991-4146. A message from the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission.
Horses take the track for the second, named for Patrick Smelly. It's for three-year-olds and up, an optional claiming event, 400,000 to 300,000. Native bred six-year-olds and up, non-winners of four, and imported six-year-olds and up, non-winners of three, the distance 1,100 metres or five and a half furlongs. Number two, Victoria's Medallion, make the weight 54 kilos or 119 pounds. Five, Queen Zan, 53 or 117. A wagering on a double event, exacta, trifecta, rolling triple. A play spot eight and quick four both begin here. Play spot eight has a single winner bonus in excess of 263,000. Quick four in excess of 700,000. You have three minutes. Get your bets on.
A mild upset victory for Francis in race number one, and quite fitting that Francis wins it for her trainer. Hall of Fame trainer Richard Azan, which the event in and of itself was being run in order of. So, uh, a uh, very bright start for the day for Richard Azan. And how about that couple in you know, the enclosure, Richard Azan and Monique Azan? Nice troops there uh, when uh, the presentation, presentation was being made. So a great day, a great day for the Azan so far on Thornbird Owners and Breeders Association Day in culmination with the Lady Gita as well as the Thornbird Six. So Francis, six to one winner. Mild upset victory to start the Reggae Six. Reggae Six, live ticket count 1,425. 5.723 million in that net pool. And the catch line starts off with 158 tickets with 1.126 million in that net pool. It's time for the place for eight and quick four. Race two comes up right now. Top selection for the Patrick Smelly is number one, Rocket Lily. Six to five for Radish Roman. Riding for Christopher Pierce. And Christopher Pierce more popular than a Superman. This one looked well and has speed. And speed could be good enough to lead and make all the running. My second choice, number five, Queen Zan, also quite speedy. So they could end up in a speed duel. You're getting three to one for Queen Zan. And Rusty with the champion jockey Ray Lewis. I'm told by a very good source that he's coming to defend this championship. And he just won race number one, beating Jason Acosta and Carlton Watson Rosetta, the favorite. So things look quite clear cut as to the intentions of Ray Lewis to defend his championship title. Rusty at three to five could very well give him the first double. At number two, Victor's medallion gets nine to one, should also be prominent throat in this small feed of five. One, five, four, two for me in the Patrick Smelly. Rocket Lady to get a better Queen Zan, Rusty, and Victor's Medallion. Quick four pool, 350,000. Place for eight pool, 700,000. You have limited time remaining. Best of luck. And on to race number two. Number four, Rusty, currently at 215, you're three to five here to the tote. Rusty is the best back runner in this race. Um, very, very close though, because Queen Zan is also selling a lot, currently at 370. And not as much support as we would have expected for Rocket Lily currently at 220. But for those of you who haven't yet done so, log on to kmanasbet.com and you can see the, you can see all the prices of for the fix odds for the races today. And a reminder that you'll be able to buy foreign races for most of the North American tracks, Gulfstream, Aqueduct, Keeneland, etc. So you can go ahead and get your sides on. Horses loading, last chance to make your wagers. Victoria's medallion, the first one in. Joined by a traditional boy. So Victoria's medallion, traditional boy, those are the first two to load. Rusty, the three to five favorite, loads at four. Queen Zan heads to five. Rider comes down from Rocket Lily. That's the Sneaky Fox, Radish Roman. Rocket Lily goes in. Roman climbs aboard. Five and a half prolonged the trip. This is race number two. Best of luck if you play the play spot eight and a quick four. Michael Sims is ready, ready for a start. They're off and racing, came out in a good line. A Queen's Anne left at the back of the field, though, as Rocket Lily blasts into an early lead. Tracked on the outside by Rusty. Going down into third, that's Queen's Anne. Then comes uh, Victoria's Medallion and racing at the back of the field. That's a traditional boy. They go past the four, and it is Rocket Lily on that lead. A length and a piece in front of the... On the outside, coming around, that's Queen's Anne going down into second. Rusty tracks them in third. About six lengths before we come to Victoria's Medallion and Traditional Boy racing at the back of the field. So Queen's Anne and Rocket Lily matching stride as they come at the top of the lane. Queen's Anne on the outside. Rocket Lily right in the middle, right against the rail. That is Rusty coupling up nicely. They're coming to the furlong and a half pole, and it is still Rocket Lily. Just the leader from right on the rail. That's Rusty. It's Rocket Lily. Rusty trying to come on the inside. It's Rocket Lily and Rusty. Now Rusty bursting to on the inside, and Rusty goes about his business. It's Rusty in front and begins to pull away. Still fighting on. That is a Rocket Lily, but Rusty, it's the second win on the card for the champion jockey. 
Action Pack Ren Lewis. Rusty beats Rocket Lily. Then comes Victor's medallion. It got tight for fourth. Could be either traditional boy or Queen's Anne. In the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number two, the Patrick Smelly. Number four, Rusty, six-year-old Bay Gelding by a Drill. Kenzie's Charm by Harlem's Holiday. Bred Glenn Mills, own M and P. Trained Patrick Lindsay, winning rider. Copying the early double, the champion jockey, Action Packer and Lewis. The groom, Steve Kerr. Second. A number one, Rocket Lily. A third, number two, Victoria's Medallion. Fourth, number five, Queen Zan. Final time for five and a half furlongs, 110 flat. Michael Sims is ready, ready for a start. They're off and racing, came out in a good line. A Queen's Anne left at the back of the field, though, as Rocket Lily blasts into an early lead. Tracked on the outside by Rusty. Going down into third, that's Queen's Anne. Then comes uh, Victoria's Medallion and racing at the back of the field. That's a traditional boy. They go past the four, and it is Rocket Lily on that lead. A length and a piece in front of the... On the outside, coming around, that's Queen's Anne going down into second. Rusty tracks them in third. About six lengths before we come to Victoria's Medallion and Traditional Boy racing at the back of the field. So Queen's Anne and Rocket Lily matching stride as they come at the top of the lane. Queen's Anne on the outside. Rocket Lily right in the middle, right against the rail. That is Rusty coupling up nicely. They're coming to the furlong and a half pole, and it is still Rocket Lily. Just the leader from right on the rail. That's Rusty. It's Rocket Lily. Rusty trying to come on the inside. It's Rocket Lily and Rusty. Now Rusty bursting to on the inside and Rusty goes about his business. It's Rusty in front and begins 
begins to pull away. Still fighting on, that is a Rocket Lily, but Rusty, it's the second win on the card for the champion jockey, Action Pack Ren Lewis. Rusty beats Rocket Lily, then comes Victor's medallion, got tight for fourth. Could be either traditional boy or Queen Anne. Result of the second now official, horses to the testing barn, ro one, Rocket Lily, four, Rusty. One and four both go to the testing barn. Rusty, 156 to win, 118 to place. Second one, Rocket Lily, 120, third to two, Victoria's Medallion, fourth five, Queen's Anne. The double, 854, Exacta, 241. Trifecta, 454, splits, 23-4, 48-2. They raced five and a half furlongs in one ten flat. The margins five and three quarters by two and three quarters. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Patrick Smelly. Making the presentation, Mr. Dale Murphy, and he makes it to Kibisha Little, representing the winning owner, M and P. Also, the winner will get gift vouchers of four bags of feed, two Burger King vouchers, a sheet set, courtesy of LPSR and the bags of feed, courtesy of Hype Pro Feeds, gift baskets, courtesy of Cal's and Grace Kennedy, <laughs> second and third place will receive uh, vouchers, uh, Hype Pro vouchers and uh, Burger King vouchers, and that can be collected at the director's box. So, that's the second and third place finishers. Connections may collect the gift vouchers, bags of feeds, and Burger King voucher at the director's room. Congratulations to the winning connections. Race number two, the Patrick Smelly.
So Rusty gets the job done in race number two, the Patrick Smelly on Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association Day. And that was a fine ride by Ray Lewis. Early double for Ray Lewis. And as I told you earlier, a very good source tells me that he's up to defend his title. And he started off the day with nine wins, some way behind Kevin Foster, who's on all of 38 wins. Would have to start somewhere. And now Ray Lewis is on 11. So the first double is in the back for Ray Lewis. And what a good payout there, $854 for the Ray Lewis fans in the first two races. Francis and Rusty delivering the goods. Live ticket count on the regular six, 1,425 with 5.723 million in the net pool. Live ticket count on the catch nine, 158 with 1.126 million in that net pool. It's time for race three, the start of the early pick five, and this is for Fitzroy Glispy, more popular known as Punkin, former top flight rider, came on spot, now owner, trainer, and breeder. We have a feed of six. They go 1,000 meters round. Top selection goes to number four. Jaguar. Speedy sort. Led for every step of the way, except within shade of the wild last time out at six and a half furlongs. It's now five furlongs round. So Jaguar should go to the lead and should make all the running. Number six, Talona has speed as well. Should be in chase from a long way out. But don't really see Talona getting back to Jaguar at all at five furlongs round. And she's fantastic. This one gets odds of 14 to 1. Has some pace as well, but more than likely the outsped by the likes of Jaguar and Talona. And legal bomb number five. This one gets 7 to 1. Roman appear riding for Patrick Lynch. Patrick Lynch just had a win with Rusty in race number two. So he's looking for a quick double. And legal bomb has prospects of running on strong inside the final furlong. Jaguar number four to make it a gate to our performance and get the better of number six, Talona. Then two, she's fantastic. And five, Legal bomb. 16 minutes to go to post to the third. Early pick five pool, 300,000 wagered. Triple is at 250,000. Get your bets on early. And best of luck.
Horses take the track for the third. Named for Fitzroy Glispie. It's a restricted allowance three for native bred five year olds and up, non winners of four, and imported five year olds and up, non winners of three, the distance 1,000 meters or five furlongs round. One traditional boy, 50 kilos or 110. Two, she's fantastic, 52 or 115. Three, salad, 53 or 117. Four, jaguar, 55 or 121. Five, a legal bomb, 49.5 or 109. Wagering offered on double event, exacta, trifecta, rolling triple. This is where the early pick five begins. Single winner bonus in excess $2.291 million. Early pick five heading for 600000 rolling triple on its way to 400000 You have two minutes. Get your bets on. And we're here for race number three. And um, number six, Talona, is actually the best back runner in this race, currently at 280. Uh, most of the support is for Talona, but number four, Jaguar, currently at 180, is very, very close in terms of the support. But right now, Talona has the edge in terms of the betting at the Pixar's window. Uh, good support for Salud, currently at 550, and also Legal Bomb at $9. But Apart from the race, just a reminder to all of you, if you haven't yet done so, log on to kmanasbet.com and it will enable you to see the prices for all of the fixed odds races at Kmanas Park. But the good news is, not only are the races at Kmanas Park being sold, but there will be foreign races available. All those, all your favorite North American tracks, Tampa Bay, Gulfstream, Laurel, um, Aqueduct, Keeneland, they're all for sale. If you log on to kmanasbet.com, you can buy fixed odds at those North American tracks. But guess what? There's even more because not only are those foreign tracks available for fixed odds betting on, on the online platform, you can also go to your fixed odds windows at the track and you can buy bets, fixed odds bets on the North American tracks. Like I said, Gulfstream, Tampa, Laurel, Aqueduct, Keeneland, and so forth. All your favorite North American tracks are now available for fixed odds betting at the fixed odds windows at the track. So if you haven't yet done so, log on to kmanasbets.com, open an account. You can see your, well, even if you don't open an account, you're, you'll be able to see the prices on all of the Caymanas and the foreign, um, the fixed odds prices on those tracks for betting. But when you verify your ID, you will be able to add money and top up your account and you will be able to start betting online. So go to kmanasbet.com now and sign up.
Horse is not loading. Traditional lady was the first to load, joined by she is fantastic, as the early pick five heads for six hundred thousand, the triple four hundred thousand. Salad comes into three. Jaguar heading for four. Legal bomb will come into five, and Tolona six. Legal bomb coming into an open gate five. Backing away. So legal bomb they try with. Five furlongs round. As we say, a quick dash. So Talona waits on legal bomb who goes in. And then Talona will be the final one. Up comes Talona to six. Bright sunny afternoon here at Caymanus Park. Talona in, field in line. They're ready. They're off for the dash. Legal Bomb steps out just a bit slowly along with She's Fantastic left at the back as Tolona has now dashed through and grabs a narrow lead. Jaguar in the red silks chasing, running the rail as they leave the half mile marker. They've opened up a gap of maybe six lengths to Salad. A Legal Bomb is a further four lengths back, joined by Traditional Lady. They rub shoulders and She's Fantastic trills the field. They've left the three and run now toward the final five sixteenth of a mile and the match race up front continues to Lona on the rail harassed now by Jaguar in the red and these two will come thundering into the top of the lane. Jaguar now increases his speed and Jaguar points the nose in front. Tolona fighting right back on the rail and this is ahead Bob as they drive past the three sixteenth. Tolona looks to have the nose in front. Jaguar continues the fight. Tolona just beginning to slip out of the grasp of Jaguar as they slip past the furlong pole. It is now Tolona opening up a two or three length gap a 16th to catch Tolona and you will pin a guess what they can't Tolona is bounding in and will win effortlessly in the end by maybe five running on from nowhere that traditional lady grabbing the second from Jaguar third Salud is fourth
In the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number three, the Fitzroy Glispy. Number six, Talona. Five-year-old dog, Bay Mayor by Byron. To my delight, by Cape Town. Red Kathy Maybe and Byron Syndicate. Owned and trained, Oral Hayden. The winning rider, Uville Pinup, the groom, Andre Seaton. Second, number one, Traditional Lady. Third, number four, Jaguar. And fourth, number three, Salad. Final time for five furlongs round, 101 and three. They're off for the dash. Legal Palm steps out just a bit slowly along with She's Fantastic left at the back as Tolona has now dashed through and grabs a narrow lead. Jaguar in the red silks chasing, running the rail as they leave the half mile marker. They've opened up a gap of maybe six lengths to Salud. A legal bomb is a further four lengths back, joined by traditional lady. They rub shoulders, and she's fantastic, trills the field. They've left the three and run now toward the final five sixteenth of a mile in the match race. Up front continues Tolona on the rail, harassed now by Jaguar in the red. And these two will come thundering into the top of the lane. Jaguar now increases his speed, and Jaguar points the nose in front. Tolona fighting right back on the rail. And this is ahead, Bob, as they drive past the three sixteenth. Tolona looks to have the nose in front. Jaguar continues the fight. Tolona just begins beginning to slip out of the grasp of Jaguar as they slip past the furlong pole. It is now Talona opening up a two or three length gap as 16th to catch Talona and you will pin a guess what they can't. Talona is bounding in and will win effortlessly in the end by maybe five. Running on from nowhere, that traditional lady grabbing the second from Jaguar third, Salad is fourth. Result of the third, now official, horses to the uh, testing barn, four Jaguar, six Talona. Four and six go to the testing barn. Talona, 356 to win, 660 to place. The second one, traditional lady, 656. Third, four Jaguar, fourth, three Salad. Double, 1,486. Exacto, 1,183. Trifecta, 1,646. 109 triples, 5,088. The splits 23 by 47. They raced five furlongs round in 101.3. The margins four and a quarter by one and a half. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Fitzroy Glispie. 
Making the presentation, trainer Fitzroy Glispie, and he makes it to trainer Coral Hayden, who's Talona, who won the third. The winner will receive gift vouchers from High Pro Feed, four bags of feed, two Burger King vouchers, a sheet set courtesy of LP Azar, gift basket courtesy of Cal's and Grace Kennedy, and of course, second and a third place finishers will receive gift vouchers from High Pro and Burger King. And that can be collected and in the director's box. So the second and a third place finisher gift vouchers of high pro feed and Burger King vouchers can be collected in the director's box. It's time to seize the opportunity, your chance to win big, have never been better. Tune in. We have an increased minimum guarantee. We have with mandatory payouts and increased minimum guarantees all month. And for Sunday the 14th at Kemanis Park, the Catch 9 of the 14th, Sunday the 14th of April, Catch 9, the minimum guaranteed will be increased to 750000 And on the 20th, that's Sunday, the 20th of April, the strike four. Minimum guaranteed payout of 750000 And Sunday, the 28th, first pick five, minimum guaranteed of 500000 Fixed odds at Caymanis Park just got a lot more convenient. Introducing the fixed odds online platform, caymanisbet.com. Sign up online and submit your KYC documents in person or via email at kmanusbet at svlgrp.com to start betting fix odds at Kmanus Park and on simulcast tracks. Top up is available at Kmanus Park or direct deposit. Simulcast wagering will be available at Fixod's betting windows at Caymanis Park as well. Many more features, promotions, and bet types to come. Stay tuned.
So Talona outspeeds Jaguar from the start, and uh, that was that. You will Pinnock, a uh, fine ride there, getting the better of uh, Jaguar from the word go. And uh, Talona made all the running. Traditional lady ran on from far behind at the complete exact, exact return, 1,183. And the first triple of the day, $5,088. That ticket count on the regular six now down to 333. So coming down from 1,425 to 333. Talona's victory uh, significantly impacted the live ticket count there as well as on the catch line now down from 158 to 23. So Talona did some damage on both exotics. It's now time for the Twilight Six. It's now race number four in honor of Carlton Watson. We have a field of seven. A restricted allowance five for Nature Bell Fours and up nuns of two and imported maidens. $3.5 million in that minimum guaranteed payout for your Twilight Six. Top selection goes to number seven, Brit Bryan Express. Had a pipe opener on the 30th of March when finishing third by five lengths of bulletproof coffee. And Manushi, that was at five for down straight, would have stripped fitter. Tevin Foster replaces Joe Forbes in the side for Filipiano D. And owner Edgar Miller, Brit Baron Express, opens up at one to nine. The prohibited favorite in the early betting. And this one gets the vote. Number three, she's a barrage. Uncovered her well being last time out at 46 to one. We finished in second by half a length behind Noble Attitude. That was at six for 118 flat. Fairly average time for the double. But She's a Mirage has prospects of making all the running here. 9 to 2. The second choice in the wager. Number 6. Blinking Light gets 6 to 1. Ray and Lucy champion jockey has a double so far today. He's riding well. And this Blinking Light is seasoned at 11 rounds of 2. Has finished 4th, 3rd on quite a few occasions. So he definitely has to be kept on the right side. Your third choice in the wager at 6 to 1. Number 2. Mr. Wonderful has speed and pace. One at 14 to 1 on the 4th of November, beating Lady Randallari and Crucial Alexia. But since stepping up the nuns of two, has been outsped in his races. Showing up early, but weak in late. It's not only five for round. So look for Mr. Wonderful to at least be prominent from the word go. And he could hold on for a piece of the trifecta. Make it 7 3 6 2. Brit Ryan Express over She's a Mirage, Blinking Light. And Mr. Wonderful Twilight Six Pool, 5.2 million. Your triple is at 300,000. 15 minutes to wager. Get your bets on early and best of luck.
Horses take the track for the fourth, named for Carter Watson. It's a restricted allowance five for native bred four-year-olds and up, non-winners of two, and imported four-year-olds and up maidens, the distance 1,000 meters or five furlongs round. Five Xylophonic Steel, 51.5 or 114. Seven Brit Brian Express, 53.5 or 118. Wagering offered on double event, exacta, trifecta, rolling triple. This is where the Twilight Six begins. Twilight Six on its way to 7 million, rolling triple on its way to 500,000. You have four minutes to get your bets on. And we're on to race number four. We have a one to five favorite in the total, and that's number seven, Brit Brian Express. While getting good support at the fixed odds windows, it's not the best back runner. The best back runner actually is number three. She's a, she's a Mirage currently at six dollars compared to your four to one in the tote. So interesting betting here. They're choosing to forego the favorite at the fixed odds windows, and they're going for she's a Mirage. And uh, it's really a, a low volume betting race, so there's really not a whole lot to say, but. The bulk of the money has been on She's a Mirage, currently at $6. And um, I'll just use this opportunity once again to remind you, if you have not yet done so, log on to kmanasbet.com where you can create an account. But even if you don't create an account, you will be able to view the fixed odds prices for the Caymanas Park races and all of the North American tracks that we also are selling fixed odds bets on. So even if you don't log in, even if you don't sign up, you can see the prices, but of course, it's best if you sign up and then you can get your documents verified and you can make a deposit and you can start placing your fixed odds bets online. So, and also, if you're interested in betting the foreign races, you can um, come to the fixed odds windows and you can buy fixed odds on all your favorite North American tracks in addition to Caymanas Park. So that's it for race four. Good luck.
So the runners are arriving at the post. Runners arriving at the post and the Twilight Six approaching 7.5 million and the Rolling Triple has gone past a half a million dollars. It's heading to one, heading to 550,000. Get your bets on. Runners arriving at the post. They've closed up the front of the gates for the loading process, so loading about to start. Five furlongs round the trip. Twilight Six heads to 7.5 million. So scratch number five, Xylophonic Steel, Xylophonic Steel scratched by other of the stewards on the advice of the vet. Scratch number five, Xylophonic Steel. Very late scratch here in race number four. Horses loading, last chance to make your wagers. The first one in, Mr. Wonderful. To kill a mockingbird, heads to one. To kill a mockingbird goes in. Twilight six heads to eight million dollars. Blinking light loads at six. Rolling triple heading to 600,000. Brick Brian Express, the firm choice at one to, two, one to five. Loads at seven. She's a Mirage. Heads to three. Goes in. And the final one, Princess Aquila. To load at four. Five furlongs around the trip. Best of luck if you play the Twilight Six and all other wagers. Michael Sims is ready. Ready for a start.
They're off and racing to kill a mockingbird. Steps slow and is left at the back of the field as uh, she's a mirage blast into an early lead. Tracked by Brit Brian Express going down into second. Right against the rail, that's Mr. Wonderful as they pass the four. Then comes Blinking Light overtaking Princess Aquila and left at the back of the field. That to kill a mockingbird. They head toward the three and it is uh, she's a mirage. Bowling along on a four-length lead from Brit Brian Express, chasing in second. Right against the rail, that is Mr. Wonderful. Right beside Mr. Wonderful and coming around, that's Blinking Light. Then comes Princess Aquila and still at the back of the field to kill a mockingbird. They're at the top of the lane and it is She's a Mirage in front. Here comes Brit Brian Express trying to get to She's a Mirage. Switched in the middle of the racetrack, it's She's a Mirage still in front. Brit Brian Express is fighting hard and trying to come forward. It's still She's a Mirage. Brit Brian Express is chasing, but it's She's a Mirage. And Osway Osorio still in front. It's Brit Brian Express coming up the rail. It's She's a Mirage and Brit Brian Express. I think She's a Mirage might have just held on from Brit Brian Express. Then comes Mr. Wonderful. Cut tie for fourth between Blinking Light and Princess Aquila. In the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number four, the Carlton Watson. Uh, number three, She's a Mirage, a four-year-old Bay filly by Casual Trick. Full Moon's Enough and by He's Had Enough, Red Orange Valley Estates Limited. Own Elizabeth Costa, conditioned by the champion trainer, Jason Costa, the winning rider and a nice ride from Osue Osorio, the groom, Daniel Brown. Second, number seven, Brian Express. A third, number two, Mr. Wonderful. And a fourth, number six, Blinking Light. Final time for five furlongs round, 102 and three.
They're off and racing to kill a mockingbird. Steps slow and is left at the back of the field as uh, she's a mirage blast into an early lead. Tracked by Brit Brian Express going down into second. Right against the rail, that's Mr. Wonderful as they pass the four. Then comes Blinking Light overtaking Princess Aquila and left at the back of the field. That's to kill a mockingbird. They head toward the three and it is uh, she's a mirage. Bowling along on a four-length lead from Brit Brand Express, chasing in second. Right against the rail, that is Mr. Wonderful. Right beside Mr. Wonderful and coming around, that's Blinking Light. Then comes Princess Aquila and still at the back of the field to kill a mockingbird. They're at the top of the lane and it is She's a Mirage in front. Here comes Brit Brand Express trying to get to She's a Mirage. Switched in the middle of the racetrack, it's She's a Mirage still in front. Brit Brand Express is fighting hard and trying to come forward. It's still She's a Mirage. Brit Brand Express is chasing, but it's She's a Mirage. And Oswe Osorio still in front. It's Brit Brian Express coming up the rail. It's She's a Mirage and Brit Brian Express. I think She's a Mirage might have just held on from Brit Brian Express. Then comes Mr. Wonderful. Cut tie for fourth between Blinking Light and Princess Aquila. Result of the fourth, now official horses to the testing barn. Two, Mr. Wonderful. Three, She's a Mirage. Two and three both go to the uh, testing barn. She's a Mirage, 382 to win, 130 to place. Second, seven, Brit Brian Express, 110. Third went to two, Mr. Wonderful. And fourth, six, Blinking Light. Five, Xylophonic Steel, a very late scratch at the gate. The special double, $460. The double event, 2006. Exact of 481. A trifecta, 1,164. 86 triples, 2,006, 84. Splits, 23-3, 47-3. Final time, 5 furlongs round, 102-3. Margins, a short head by 12. Have a look at your monitors, photograph showing number three. She's a mirage getting the better of seven Brit Brian Express. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Carlton Watson. Making the presentation, trainer Greg Fennell, and he makes it to Mr. Donovan Hutchinson. Greg Fennell will present gift vouchers from High Pro Feed. Burger King vouchers, a sheet set, courtesy of LPSR, a gift basket, courtesy of Cal's and Grace Kennedy, and a case of water. I'd like to thank the following sponsors for their kind sponsorship, High Pro Feeds, LPSR, Burger King, Cal's and Grace Kennedy. Congratulations to the winning connections. Race number four, the Carlton Watson.
and the second and the third place will receive uh, gift vouchers from High Pro Feed and uh, Burger King, and that can be collected at the director's box. So that's second and third for gift vouchers, High Pro Feeds and Burger King vouchers. You can collect at the director's box.
So she's a Maraja hangs on by a short head with Josue Osorio on the Saturday for Jason Acosta and Elizabeth Acosta just getting the better of the big favorite Brit Brand Express. Uh, an exciting finish here in race number four. Good exact appeal, 481. The top two choices in the betting, the second favorite getting the better of the favorite. Life ticket count on the Vegas Six stands at 148 with 5.7 million in the net pool. Five tickets are alive on the catch nine with 1.126 million in that net pool. And uh, tomorrow is going to be mandatory appeal to the catch nine. So at this stage of the day, with uh, just about five races remaining, just five tickets are alive. So it's going to be a challenging last five races for the catch nine players there. But don't worry, tomorrow it will all be paid out on mandatory pay out day. 1,587 live tickets are on the Twilight Six with 5.428 million in that net pool. It's now time for race number five, the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. We have a field of seven going 1,820 meters or 925 yards. The Spectator Street as the event begins right in front of the grandstands. Top selection here is number six, Rainsville. Tevin Foster riding for Hall of Fame trader Richard Zand. Richard Zand looking for a double scored in race number one with Francis in honor of himself. Race one was run in honor of Hall of Fame trader Richard Zand. Rainsville steps back down from open allowance where he competed in the Census Senior Trophy, the Chairman's Trophy as well. Fourth by 40 lengths is that a fact? Atomica and rough entry. No horse of the caliber of is that a fact? Atomica and rough entry present here. So Rainsville has an easier assignment. Last time out, ridden by Delroy Bihari, was fifth by 50 lengths behind Desert of Malibu, further on beyond, and a gift from Ben. And clearly, a positive change of rider here with the leading rider, Tevin Foster, now at the helm. 57 kilos is going to be the top weight here for Rainsville. He'll be allowing weight all round, lumps of weight too. So it may not be an afternoon stroll for him, but he appears to be the one to beat here. Number three, Sonny and Chippy gets seven to one. Ridden six of the last seven times by Tevin Foster. It's now Radish Roman picking up the mount for Trina Spencer Chung. Last time out, ran a disappointing fourth, beaten by nine lengths at seven to five. Behind Mama Mia, get a Pepsi and all for love. Two turns is right up his street. He has a win at nine and 25 May last year. He also won at a mile. So Sonny and Chippy is expected to do very well. And you're getting a generous price here of seven to one. Number one, Sunset Silhouette gets three to one. Abigail Abrain for Jason Acosta and Elizabeth Acosta. Third last time out at five front straight, just a length and a quarter behind Volatility and Champion Bubbler. Now stretches out to two turns, has been quite consistent at overnight, hasn't won at overnight allowance yet, but looks well equipped for a brave effort here. A mere 48 kilos for Sunset Silhouette. Current get odds of three to one. And number five is All for Love. Six and champion jockey Omar Walker teams up with Gear Sobriety. They have struck up some good form in recent times. How about that win in the Viceroy Trophy with Atomica? And they also had a horse named Paperwork the same day. So look for the synergy between Omar Walker and Gear Sobriety to continue here. All for Love stretches out now from seven and a half front to nine front and 25 yards. Has won two of her last three. So she's quite fit at present. And she gets three to one. And she should definitely be bang contention right to the very end. It's the Thorbed Orders and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. Toba gonna go 6-3-1 and 5. Rainsville to get the better of Sunny T and Chippy. Sunset Silhouette. All for love. Nine minutes on the board. Pick five pool. Already 850,000 wagered. Your triples is at a quarter of a million. Get a bet on early and the very best of fortune to you.
Horses take the track for the fifth. This is the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. It's an overnight allowance for three-year-olds and up the distance 1,820 metres or nine furlongs, 25 yards. Number one, Sunset Silhouette, 48.5 or 107 pounds. Three, Sunny Tea and Chippy, 53.5 or 118. A wagering on a double event, Exacta, Trifecta, a rolling triple. The late pick five begins here. Late pick five heading for 1.5 million. The triple heading for 400,000. You have three minutes. Get your wagers on. So this is race number five, the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. This is where the late pick five starts, and late pick five, very attractive. It's approaching 1.5 million, the late pick five pool on its way to 1.5 million, and your rolling triple approaching 400,000. Get your bets on, and let's go across to the fixed odds desk for an update. And we are on to race number five, and... The horse number five, All for Love, currently at $5.50. That's the best back runner in this race. Despite the fact that the number six, Rainsville, is at $1.50, and it's actually your four to five favorite in the tote, but the punters are going to try and beat Rainsville here, and they're going for number five, All for Love, currently at $5.50. Also getting good support, as I mentioned, is Rainsville. Number three, Sonny T and Chippy currently at $14. At $14. Sonny T and Chippy getting good support here as well. Uh, Sunset Silhouette at $5.50, not getting quite the amount of support that we would have anticipated, uh, especially after that fit run and last. But they're all going for All for Love at the fixed odds windows here. And just another quick reminder, if you haven't yet gone to kmanasbet.com and signed up for your online betting account so you can bet your fit odds online, do so now. And that's it for race number five. Good luck.
We're getting close now to loading up. The late pick five heading for 1.6. The triple on its way to 500,000. Any moment now, they will close up the front of the gates. In preparation for loading, you need to get your bets on. Don't be shut out. Don't be disappointed. They're closing up the front of the gates. Late pick five on its way to 1.6. Triple continues to make its way to 500,000. Get your bets on. Loading up, about to begin. Sunset silhouette walking to gate one. Abigail Abel up. Abigail and sunset silhouette load. Bridal blush coming into four. That's Roderick Acosta. Positive ID circling around gate two with O'Neill Mullings. So they try with positive ID and all for love. All for love going into five. Positive ID refusing. Omar Walker rides all for love. Rainsville and terrific Tevin Foster. They will load at six. They're in. Sunity and Chippy Storm and positive ID remain out. Sunity and uh, Chippy and uh, Radish Roman load next at three. Positive ID. Trying again at two. Here comes Storm up to seven. <laughs> Storm is in, they're off. First start, positive ID though, left behind horses. Sunset Silhouette gets a good start, so to Bridal Blush, and Bridal Blush will take them along toward the mile and the clubhouse turn. Bridal Blush off the rail, racing with that lead, Sunny T and Chippy nearest to it. Reigns with the grey edging closer, Storm now beginning to pick up and uh, making gains on the leader. All for Love races further back, Sunset Silhouette in behind, and Positive ID is at the back and uh, struggling as they go toward the back stretch. Bridal Blush out in front. Storm continues the chase from second as they run toward the final six. Sunny T and Chippy settle down in third. Rainsville cruising in fourth. All for Love is running in fifth as they go passing the sixth. Sunset Silhouette is next and forget Positive ID with Mount Everest to climb. They make their way toward the final five. Bridal Blush attempting to go all the way. Storm sitting in the dicky seat in second, a length and a half back. Sunny T and Chippy now begins to roll. All for Love in the white race is back in fourth, five and a half off that lead. Rainsville now gets going with Sunset Silhouette and Positive ID continues to race last. They've left the half mile. The tempo now should increase as they're approaching the final 7.16. Bridal Blush trying to slip away. Leads up by some two lengths. Sunny T and Chippy now goes a-hunting. All for love. Close enough if good enough. So two sunset silhouette. Rainsville has six or seven lengths to find. A break back to Storm and Positive ID now making some positive ground. Maybe too late as they leave the 5.16th and will come into the top of the lane. Bridal Blush has to be caught. They're at the two. Sunny T and Chippy has done the job and now grabs that lead. What Watch All for Love on the outside in the all-white. Sunset Silhouette and Abigail Abel now asked to roll down against the rail. It's Sunny T and Chippy out in front. Sunset Silhouette now nibbling at the lead and getting closer with every stride. They flash past the furlong pole. It's Sunny T and Chippy being driven to the max by Radish Roman beginning to open a length. Being chased all the while by Sunset Silhouette who won't stop Sunny T and Chippy from winning the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. It's tight in behind. 
between positive ID and all for love. In the winners enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number five, the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. The number three, Sunny T and a Chippy. Five-year-old Bay Horse by Savoy Stomp. Trinket Box by Ber Bernardini. Bred Kamal Maharaj. Owned W.G. Crichton, F.F. Foot and Kent D. Lynn. Train Spencer Chung, the winning rider, the Sneaky Fox. Radish Roman, the groom Earl Thomas, second. The number one, Sunset Silhouette. Third, number five, All for Love. And the fourth, number two, Positive ID. Final time for nine furlongs and a 25 yard, two minutes flat.
Your attention, please, in today's sixth race coming up, scratch number 16, she's stylish, she's stylish is sick. Scratch 16, she's stylish, race six, she's stylish is sick. Hi there, my name is Carl Sabuda and I have been a proud participant in the thoroughbred breeding industry for over 30 years. Despite the challenges from time to time, the joy that comes with having bred and cared for a horse that eventually becomes a champion is among the greatest feelings of joy imaginable. We at Hyde Valley Farm have been blessed with having produced the great Atomica arguably one of the best local bread fillies ever. Thanks to all the wonderful people in the industry who continue to make horse racing one of the greatest sports enjoyed by a wide cross section of Jamaica at all levels. May we continue to grow and develop this great industry for the benefit of all. God bless you all and one love. Storm is in, they're off. First start, positive ID though, left behind horses. Sunset Silhouette gets a good start, so to Bridal Blush, and Bridal Blush will take them along toward the mile and the clubhouse turn. Bridal Blush off the rail, racing with that lead, Sunny T and Chippy nearest to it. Rains with the grey edging closer, Storm now beginning to pick up and uh, making gains on the leader. All for Love races further back, Sunset Silhouette in behind, and positive ID is at the back and uh, struggling as they go toward the back stretch. Bridal Blush out in front. Storm continues the chase from second as they run toward the final six. Sunny T and Chippy settle down in third. Rinsville cruising in fourth. All for Love is running in fifth as they go passing the sixth. Sunset Silhouette is next and forget positive ID with Mount Everest to climb. They make their way toward the final five. Bridal Blush attempting to go all the way. Storm sitting in the dicky seat in second, a length and a half back. Sunny T and Chippy now begins to roll. All for Love in the white race is back in fourth, five and a half off that lead. Rainsville now gets going with Sunset Silhouette and Positive ID continues to race last. They've left the half mile. The tempo now should increase as they're approaching the final 7.16. Bridal Blush trying to slip away. Leads up by some two lengths. Sunny T and Chippy now goes a-hunting. All for love. Close enough if good enough. So to Sunset Silhouette. Rainsville has six or seven lengths to find. A break back to Storm and Positive ID now making some positive ground. Maybe too late as they leave the 5.16th and will come into the top of the lane. Bridal Blush has to be caught. They're at the two. Sunny T and Chippy has done the job and now grabs that lead. What 
watch all for love of the outside in the all white sunset silhouette and abigail able now asked to roll down against the rail it's sunny t and chippy out in front sunset silhouette now nibbling at the lead and getting closer with every stride they flash past the furlong pole it's sunny t and chippy being driven to the max by radish roman beginning to open a length being chased all the while by sunset silhouette who won't stop sunny t and chippy from winning the thoroughbred owners and breeders association of jamaica trophy it's tight in behind between id and all for love Result of the fifth now official, horses to the testing barn, one, Sunset Silhouette, three, Sunny T and uh, Chippy. One and three both go to the testing barn, Sunny T and Chippy, 628 to win, 216 to place. Second one, Sunset Silhouette, 176. Third five, All for Love, 218. Fourth two, Positive ID. The double, 1832. Exacta, 805. Trifecta, 1468. There were 60 winning triples, 4,818, and 49 winners of the quick four, 5,076 each. Splits 26-4, 51-1, 116-2, 144-3. Final time, 9 furlongs, nine furlongs, 25 yards, 2 minutes. The margins 1 and 3 quarters by 3 and a half. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. Making the presentation, Mr. Howard Hamilton, and he makes the presentation to Mr. Kent Lynn and Dr. Frederick Foote. Winning Connections will also receive vouchers from iPro Feed, our Burger King vouchers, and to the owners of the winner, Free Stallion Serve, courtesy of Mr. Edison Chai from Fairway Stud Farm. They'll also receive a case of Cal's Juice. Gift gift basket courtesy of Cal and Cal's and Grace Kennedy. Sheet set LPSR. And also in the presentation party, the Toba directors, Courtney Thorpe, Randy McLean, Derek Brandt, Dave Girard, and Desmond Lewis. Congratulations to the winning connections, race number five, the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy.
Santian Chippy gets a win in the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. And that's Radish Roman back in the winner's enclosure. And he is coming off a little break. And uh, he has now re-entered the winner's enclosure. 5-1. to one. Good price there for Santian Chippy. Preview time. He was at 7-1. to one, And I told you that's a generous price for Santian Chippy. And I see that you got in on the action and brought that one down to 5-1. to one. Good price there for Santian Chippy. Good win. Well ridden by the Sneaky Fox Radish Roman Sunset Silhouette, lightly weighted at 48 kilos, ran a brave race to complete exact, a good exact pay of the 805. Disappointing run though from Rainsville. That one did not justify the favoritism. Live ticket count on the Vegas Six, coming to the cash out leg, stands at seven to one with 5.7 million plus in the net pool. One ticket still holding on on the catch nine, 1.126 million in that net pool. And remember, the jackpot over 2.4 million tomorrow will be mandatory payout. So you have one ticket remaining intact with four races to go. It's going to be a very difficult last four races to hold on to, but depends on how many selections that live ticket has, it could very well hold on and bring home the entire jackpot before the mandatory payout deal. Let's see how that will turn out. 633 tickets are still alive on the Twilight 6, 5.428 million is in that net pool. It's now time for race six. The winners racing stables at Bombay. And we have a big field, a maximum field actually of 16. And they go 1,000 meters straight. It's going to be a cavalry charge to start the strike four. Top selection goes to number 12, Sir Wong Don. Natalie Berger in the saddle for trader Patrick Fong and owner breeder Super Kids Racing Stable. Second two of the last four. Last time out stretched out at seven furlongs and was prominent all the way through to the wire. Four by nine and a half in the end. Cosmic Force won easily. Glitter and Magnum was second. Dimitri Pure was third. Now reverting to sprinting back over the straight. Look for Sir Wong Don to be right there at the finish. Two to one. Represents fair value for the chances of Sir Wong Don. Number eight is Lambo Girl. This one gets 15 to one. Has run some useful races over the straight. And if my records are right, her best effort yet came over the straight course. So Lambo Girl. Raced well on the 6th of April last Saturday, up to the half mile, second mile length, and then faded badly. 15 to 1 looks quite attractive for the chances of Lambo Girl. Number one, Benson gets 3 to 1, went off at 3 to 5 last time out, hopped at the start, but was still quick enough to lead at the 2 for them point in a five straight contest won by Zane's Princess over Cosmic Force. Cosmic Force came back at one easily. Benson has first time Lasix today. 3 2 on the price. Romar Spencer picks up the Mopatrina Fitzgerald Fitzner and Williams. Benson could very well tack across from that inside draw and give them a run for their money. Number five, bad investment. This one is the 8 to 5 favorite in the betting. And interesting, this one has finished second four of the last five races and came off a six month break last time out and was second by three and a quarter lengths behind Blitz Strike. That race was last Saturday, the 6th of April. So a quick turnaround here for bad investment. Now easing a bit to 9 to 5 and looks quite well in the paddock. Got to go 12 8 1 5 in the Willis Racing Stable at Bombay. Willis Racing Stables Limited at Bombay. Sir Wong Don to get a better of Lambo Girl Benson. Bad investment. Strike for pool is at 800,000. Your triple is at 250,000. Get your wages on early. And best of luck.
horses take the track for the sixth. Named for Willie's Racing Stables Limited at Bombay. It's a maiden condition race for native bred four year olds and up. The distance 1,000 meters or five furlongs straight. Number one, Benson, make the weight 54 kilos, 119 pounds. Two, security code 53 or 117. Four, Papa Gray, 54 or 119. 12, so Wang Dong, 54 or 119. Scratch 16, she's stylish, sick. Wagering on double event. Exacta, Quinella Trifecta, Superfecta, High Five, Rolling Triple. The Strike Four begins here with a single winner bonus in excess 2.133 million. Strike Four, almost at a million. Triple heading for 300,000. Nine minutes, get your bets on. And we're on to race number six here. Nice, big feel of 15 taking part well. Very nice big feel of, take, of 15 taking part. And with the big feels like this, a lot of competitive betting, and this one is not disappointing where that is concerned. Uh, there are four main contenders in terms of the betting dollars here. Number one, Benson currently at 420. Uh, three, Shadow of a Doubt currently at $9. Number five, Bad Investment currently 290. And number 12, Sir Wang Dan. He's currently at 320, and Sir Wang Dan is actually, of those four, is the best backed runner of the four, and of course the best backed runner in the race. But there are a lot of chances based on the betting. I mean, it's spread out amongst all the, all the runners, basically. Um, only about three runners, num number two, Security Code, Beautiful Moon, and um, You Look Okay. Those are ones that have really been ignored in the betting, but everybody else has been taking some amount of money. But as far as the real bulk of the money, it's Benson, Shadow of a Doubt, Bad Investment, and the best back runner of the race, as I mentioned, number 12, Sir Wang Dan, currently at 320. And I'll remind you guys once, once again, if you haven't yet logged on and signed up at kmanasbet.com, you need to do that very soon. You, you'll be able to see the prices, and of course, you'll finance your accounts and be able to place your fixed odds bets. And also remember, at the track, if you love foreign racing, you can go to any of the fixed odds windows and buy fixed odds bets at all of your favorite American tracks. So that's it for race six. Good luck.
Runners making their way to post, the uh, strike four on its way to 1.2 million. The very nice jackpot bonus attached in excess 2.1 million, the jackpot bonus. Strike four pool approaching 1.2 million. Uh, rolling triple on its way to 400,000. Get your bets on. Runners making their way to post. High five wagering offer there. High five pool on its way to 250,000. So the strike four continues to head to 1.5 million. Strike four heading to 1.5 million. And you're rolling triple approaching 450,000. High five pool on its way to 250,000. Get your bets on as the runners are making their way to post.
Your attention, please. Scratch number 14, Magnificent One. Magnificent One, scratch faulty gear. So scratch 14, Magnificent One. Although on the way to the gate, number 14, Magnificent One is a scratch. A strike four approaching 1.7 million, so the strike four trekking to 2 million on its way to 1.7 million, and the rolling triple on its way to 550,000. Get your bets on as the runners are at the post, and they'll be closing the front of the gate shortly for the loading process. Very nice strike four pool, this approaching 1.7 million, and equally attractive is the jackpot bonus in excess 2.1 million. Get your bets on. Closing the front of the gates for the loading process. They are closing the front of the gates for the loading of process. Horses loading. Security code the first one in, gate number two. So the loading up has started. Five furlongs straight the trip. Very attractive strike for pool. Papa.
alpha gray, the next one they try with. Still working on Papa Gray. They've opened gate number four. Gate nine also open. That's where beautiful moon will break from. Papa Gray is in. Right, it comes down from Sir Wang Don. That's a Natalie Berger. Gentleman is in, joined by the stable companion, Handyman. Get it seven. Strike four pool, nearing $2 million, heading to $1.9 million, and your rolling trip approaching 600000 So the loading up process will advance. Okay. Lambo girl is in. Beautiful moon, Manny Slam. Sir Wang Don. Blinding Light is in at 13. Waiting on Benson, Shadow of a Doubt. You look okay. And Atomic Energy. Benson coming to one. You look okay to 15. You look okay is in. Shadow of a doubt, that's the one they're working on. Gate three, they've opened gate three. Atomic energy is in. And the final one will be Benson from the one draw. Five furlong straight is the trip. Uh, Benson is in. We have a line ready for a start. They're off and racing. You look okay. Closest to us gets a flyer from the near side. Coming down in the middle, that's Lambo Girl. So you look okay. Lambo Girl quite prominent to the near side there. Also there, that's Sir Wang Don. Over on the far side, that's Bad Investment. Also there, that's Benson running prominently. Shadow of a Doubt is behind that one and tacking way over on the far side, that handyman. They spread right across the track, coming out of the chute and at Lambo Girl and You Look OK on the defense. Right there too, Sir Wang Don. Benson has switched down towards the near side and Benson now looks to maybe have the overall lead coming out of the chute. So it's Benson and right there too, it's Benson in front on the defense coming down from that one draw and traveling well. Also there, that's Bad Investment. It's Benson in front of Bad Investment. Man, Sir Wang Don is right behind those. It's still Benson. Sir Wang Don is trying to get to them, but it's Benson in front of B Bad Investment. And now Bad Investment gets the upper hand, and Bad Investment goes on to beat Benson. Sir Wang Don is third. Then comes uh, Atomic Energy and Lambo Girl back in fifth.
In the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number six, the Willys Racing Stables, limited at Bombay. A number five, Bad Investment, a four-year-old Bay Colt by Caswell Trick. My Angel Brianna by Zaha Z. Brett Tiana Carr, owned and a trainer, Horrell Hayden. That's the second win on the card for the trainer. Congratulations, trainer. The winning rider, Robert Halliday in the groom, Andre Seaton. Second, uh, number one, Benson. Third, number 12, Sir Wang Don. Fourth, number 11, Atomic Energy. And a fifth, number eight, Lambo Girl. Final time for five prolong straight, 102 and three. Rough and racing, you look okay. Closest to us gets a flyer from the near side. Coming down in the middle, that's Lambo Girl. So you look okay. Lambo Girl quite prominent to the near side there. Also there, that's Sir Wang Don. Over on the far side, that's Bad Investment. Also there, that's Benson running prominently. Shadow of a Doubt is behind that one and tacking way over on the far side. That's Handyman. They spread right across the track, coming out of the chute, and at Lambo Girl and You Look Okay on the defense. Right there too, Sir Wang Don. Benson has switched down towards the near side, and Benson now looks to maybe have the overall lead coming out of the chute. So it's Benson, and right there too, it's Benson in front on the defense, coming down from that one draw and traveling well. Also there, that's Bad Investment it's Benson in front of Bad Investment. Sir Wang Don is right behind those. It's still Benson. Sir Wang Don is trying to get to them, but it's Benson in front of B Bad Investment. And now Bad Investment gets the upper hand, and Bad Investment goes on to beat Benson. Sir Wang Don is third. Then comes uh, Atomic Energy and Lambo Girl back in fifth.
ideal horse farm. I want to say a big thank you to all the organizers of Supreme Racing Ventures, to all the trainers, to all the jackets, to all the groomers, and a big thank you to all the supporters that have caused racing to be such a big success in Jamaica. I want to say thank you to all the vets. I want to say thank you to all the people that works on my farm. Guys, I love you very much. Thank you very much. Without you, there would be no ideal horse farm. And I would have never been able to stay so far and be so happy with my horses. Thank you. A big shout out to Dr. Marsh. And I'm saying, Dr. Marsh, I wish you all the best. I love you. And I pray that you get well soon. Thank you for all your support. I want to say thank you, Mr. Ian Passat, for the years that you have spent together and the knowledge that you have imparted. Thank you. I want to say thank you, Mr. Henderson, who started me out with my house farming and took me in. I want to say thank you. My endeavor is to breed the best, have the best, have as many classic horses on the ideal horse farm. I want to say again, thank you, thank you for all my successes and all the people that have encouraged me and supported me. Big up, big up ideal horse farm. We go. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winners and closure for the presentation of the Willis Racing Stables Limited at Bombay. Making the presentation, trainer Howard Jagai, and he makes it to the winning trainer, also the winning owner, Mr. Horal Hayden. Trainer Jagai will also present Horal Hayden with gift vouchers of bags of feed from Hypro, gift vouchers from Burger King. Sheet set, courtesy of LPSR. Gift basket, courtesy of Grace Foods and Cal's Jamaica Limited. And a case of water. Congratulations to the winning connections, race number six, the Willis Racing Stables Limited at Bombay. Result of the six now official horses to the testing barn, five bad investment, 11 atomic energy, five and 11 both go to be tested. Bad investment, 380 to win, 136 to place. A second one, Benson, 138. Third, 12, so Wang Don, 136. Fourth, 11, Atomic Energy. Fifth, 8, Lambo Girl. Late scratches, 14, Magnificent One. Special double, 478. 16, She's Stylish. Special double, 776. Double event, 2,794. Quinella, 912. Exacta, 950. Trifecta, 792. Superfecta, 1,634. 55 high fives, 3,683. 95 triples, 4,115. 67 winners of the Reggae 6, 59,797. Single winner bonus in the Reggae 6 now growing to 3,843,195.28 cents. Splits 24, 1, 47, 2. They completed five furlongs straight in 1023, the margins one and a half by a neck.
So Bad Investment delivers a win on the 15th attempt and uh, gets a job done there with Robert Haldin riding for Trina Oral Hayden, a double on the card for Oral Hayden. Bad Investment ran last week Saturday and makes a quick turnaround and uh, gets into the winner's enclosure. Congratulations to the 57 winners of the Regal Six, each receiving 59,797. And that Regal Six jackpot continues to climb exponentially over 3.843 million in that jackpot after only the second day of uh, its renewal. Let's take a look at the closing stages of our Reggae 6 events. Francis begins to open the gap. Rosetta is racing down on the outside. King Pie has nothing at the moment, but Francis maintains that lead without for long to run. Can they catch Francis? The favorite Rosetta now lengthening stride, but Francis continues to prove slippery as an eel inside the final 16. It's Francis out in front. They're not going to stop Francis and Ryan Lewis. Action back. Ryan Lewis wins by maybe four or five over Rosetta. And then King Pie indestructible and Brenda Boy. They're coming to the furlong and a half pole, and it is still Rocket Lily, just the leader from right on the rail. That's Rusty. It's Rocket Lily. Rusty trying to come on the inside. It's Rocket Lily and Rusty. Now Rusty bursting to on the inside, and Rusty goes about his business. It's Rusty in front and begins to pull away. Still fighting on. That is Rocket Lily, but Rusty, it's the second win on the card for the champion jockey. Action pack, Ren Lewis. Rusty beats Rocket Lily, then comes... Victor's medallion got tight for fourth. Could be either traditional boy or Queen's Anne. They drive past the 316. Tolona looks to have the nose in front. Jaguar continues the fight. Tolona just beginning to slip out of the grasp of Jaguar as they slip past the furlong pole. It is now Tolona opening up a two or three length gap. A 16 to catch Tolona and you will pin up. Guess what? They can't. Tolona is bounding in and will win effortlessly in the end by maybe five. Running on from nowhere, that traditional lady grabbing the second from Jaguar third, Salad is fourth. They're at the top of the lane, and it is She's a Mirage in front. Here comes Brit Bryan Express trying to get to She's a Mirage. Switched in the middle of the racetrack. It's She's a Mirage still in front. Brit Bryan Express is fighting hard and trying to come forward. It's still She's a Mirage. Brit Bryan Express is chasing, but it's She's a Mirage. And Osue Osorio still in front. It's Brit Bryan Express coming up the rail. It's She's a Mirage and Brit Bryan Express. I think She's a Mirage might have just held on from Brit Bryan Express. Then comes Mr. Wonderful. Cut tie for fourth between Blinking Light and Princess Aquila. Sunset Silhouette and Abigail Abel now asked to roll down against the rail. It's Sunny T and Chippy out in front. Sunset Silhouette now nibbling at the lead and getting closer with every stride. They flash past the furlong pole. It's Sunny T and Chippy being driven to the max by Radish Roman beginning to open a length. Being chased all the while by Sunset Silhouette who won't stop Sunny T and Chippy from winning the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. It's tight in behind between positive ID and all for love. So it's Benson and right there too, it's Benson in front on the defense coming down from that one draw and traveling well. Also there, that's bad investment. It's Benson in front of bad investment. Sir Wang Don is right behind those. It's still Benson. Sir Wang Don is trying to get to them, but it's Benson in front of bad investment. And now bad investment gets the upper hand and bad investment goes on to beat Benson. Sir Wang Don is third. Then comes uh, Atomic Energy and Lambo Girl back in fifth. It's now time for the Lady Gita Trophy, and your, on your monitor right now is a photo of Lady Gita. Owned by Mrs. Uh, Mina Nagrani, trained Willoughby Simpson, and the jockey on board there, Roderick Teddy Da Costa. And uh, that was uh, way back in the days, and we see Roderick Da Costa riding right now here at Cayman Spark, more popular known as Teddy, 
He'll be riding today and tomorrow as well. Lady Gita, winner of the Jamaica 1000 Guineas, a grade one event in 1989. And she also won the Red Stripe Caribbean Spring Championship, a grade one event in 1989 and 1990, and was fourth in the Caribbean Classic in Puerto Rico in 1989. It's time for the Lady Gita Trophy. Six horses will go postwards. They go 1,200 meters or six furlong, the first 2.5 million. And we see the return of Mahogany coming to make his seasonal debut. Last race on the 2nd of December, running in the second round of the Mute Mile, beaten out of sight by Rough Entry Ability and Mama Mia, who were first, second, and third. Has uh, been shaping at the exercise. He's now seven years old, and uh, he has Rain Loose in the saddle, champion jockey, who has two wins so far today. So he's looking for a hat trick of wins. You have to put up with the very talented Desert of Malibu. Radish Roba looking for a double and he rides here for Gersabati. And Desert of Malibu won easily last time out, 1.19.4 for six and a half furlongs. Got a good break that day and uh, made hacks of the opposition. Prior to that, uh, raided at the gate and was beaten by still mid sensational move. And this uh, Desert of Malibu has won seven races from eight starts, has won disqualification though. And Desert of Malibu opens at one to nine. And she looks likely to take a lot of beating here. 53.5 kilos the weight. She'll be getting three and a half kilos from Mahogany. He's at 57 kilos. They look likely to fight out the finish here. And it could be an ice cold exacta in the Lady Gita Trophy. Of the others, Yellowstone should keep them on his road. Paul Francis riding for Alfred Brown. Likely weighted at 50.5 kilos. One last time up by five and a quarter lengths in 107.4. So look for Yellowstone to keep the pace uh, quite swift up front. A gift from Ben also has good speed and drawn post one. Ramon Appear with a mere 46 kilos should also be in the thick of things throughout. Going for 6, 5, 3 and 1 as my order of preference in the Lady Gita Trophy. Desert of Malibu over Mahogany, Yellowstone and a gift from Ben. Horses take the track for the seventh. This is the Lady Gita Trophy, Grade 1. It's a graded stakes, open allowance for three-year-olds and up. The distance, 1,200 metres or a six furlongs. One a gift from Ben. 45.5 or 100 pounds. Four, Big Big Daddy, 46.5 or 103. Wagering on double event. Exacta trifecta. This is where the late triple begins. The late triple. Heading for 600,000. You have five minutes. Get your bets on. And we're here for race number seven, and this is a big clash. So, uh, a lot of excite, excitement waiting to happen here. We'll see who is the big horse. But based on what the betting is saying at the fixed odds window, it's they're going for mahogany. Um, not so much money, although Desert of Malibu at $1.20. Nobody was looking for it at that small price. They're trying to beat Desert of Malibu with mahogany currently at $4.20. And um, that's pretty much the way the punters are betting it in the tote as um, they have Desert of Malibu as the 1-9 favorite and Mahogany at the 5-2 second favorite. So if you're looking to back Mahogany, um, slightly better value at the fixed odds window, 420 compared to your 350 tote. But that's pretty much it for race 7. Um, it's being dubbed a showdown between Mahogany and Desert of Malibu. So we'll, we'll see how it unfolds. And I must remind you one more time, if you haven't logged on to kmanasbet.com yet, log on and get yourself started with an account so you can start betting your fixed odds for Kmanas and North American tracks online. Good luck.
A late triple closing in on $1 million. Your late triple on its way to a million. Get your bets on. Runners arriving at the post for the Lady Gita Trophy. Get your bets on. They've closed up the front of the gates in preparation for loading in the Lady Gita. They triple approaching a million. Zero on the board. Get your bets on. Currently desert of Malibu. The one to two favorite with Radish Roman. He's looking for a double. Ryan Lewis rides mahogany. He's looking for a triple. As loading up is about to begin. Late triple heading for 1.1 now. So money coming in late. Don't be shut out. Get your bets on. Horse is now loading. First one in a gift from Ben. I'm on the pair riding. Yellowstone coming into three with Paul Francis. Big Big Daddy and Natalie Berger coming into four. Mahogany. Ryan Lewis. Aboard. Desert of Maribu, the favorite, in at six with Radish Roman. And we wait on Neostar and Josue Osorio already having a win on the card in a driving finish. So Neostar coming in. Field in line for the Lady Gita Trophy. Six furlongs, 1,200 meters. And now we have a problem with Neostar. So we may have a scratch in this event. Neostar climbing all over the gate. Horses being taken out. 
So we will have a delay. If you didn't get your bets on, you have some time. We now have two scratches, scratch numbers two Neo Star, three Yellowstone, scratched at the gate on the advice of the vet. So we're down now to four runners. Late triple on its way to 1.3 million. Horses reloading, a gift from Ben in at one. Big, big daddy, up to four, goes in. Michael Sims moving to his position. We wait on Mahogany. The favorite desert of Malibu. She's certainly a class act. Let's see what she does coming out of the gate. Desert of Malibu in. Field in line once again for the Lady Gita Trophy. Six furlongs. They're ready. They're off for the Lady Gita. They all came out as one. There's a battle up front for that lead. A gift from Ben is racing on the rail. Mahogany now moving up. Desert of Malibu right there. These three in a very tight clump as they run past the five and a gap back to the slow Big Big Daddy. They're on their way toward the half mile in the Lady Gita, and the war up front continues. Mahogany now tested by Desert of Malibu, a neck down. A gift from Ben is racing just two lengths in behind them in third, and forget Big Big Daddy needing a tow truck at the moment as they're about to arrive at the final three. 
There's a top Malibu testing mahogany. These two going at it, they're bobbing heads. A gift from Ben is there, and Big Big Daddy remains at the back as they've left the 5 16th. They're going to come into the lane. Desert of Malibu on the outside points. Mahogany continues the battle down against the rail. These two now bobbing heads for it. A gift from Ben is stepping out wide, and Big Big Daddy has a mountain to climb, but up front it's a mattress at the moment. Desert of Malibu now looks to stick the flare of a nostril in front. Mahogany continues to battle as they drive now toward the final 16th. It's a Desert of Malibu in a battle with Mahogany, and now Desert of Malibu gains the upper hand and begins to come away in the Lady Gita. She's sprinting off to win it easily in the end by maybe four. Close between a gift from Ben and Mahogany, Big Big Daddy making late progress, but still fourth and last. Your attention, please. There's now a George's Inquiry. George looking at the final 200 metres. Please hold all tickets. George's Inquiry. In the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number seven, the Lady Gita Trophy, number six, Desert of Malibu, five-year-old Chestnut Mare by Malibu Moon, Lady Digger by Yankee Gentleman, Fred Fleur de Lee Stables, Owen Houston Stables, Gary Sobrati, the winning trainer, the winning rider, second on the card, second on the card for the Sneaky Fox, Radish Roman, the groom, Claude Thompson second, a number one, a gift from Ben, a third, number five, Mahogany, and a fourth, number four, Big Big Daddy. Final time for six furlongs, one thirteen and two. Stu's inquiry. Hold all tickets, please. Stu's inquiry.
They're off for the Lady Gita. They all came out as one. There's a battle up front for that lead. A gift from Ben is racing on the rail. Mahogany now moving up. Desert of Malibu right there. These three in a very tight clump as they run past the five and a gap back to the slow Big Big Daddy. They're on their way toward the half mile in the Lady Gita, and the war up front continues. Mahogany now tested by Desert of Malibu and neck down. A gift from Ben is racing just two lengths in behind them in third, and forget Big Big Daddy needing a tow truck at the moment as they're about to arrive at the final three. Desert of Malibu testing Mahogany. These two going at it, they're bobbing heads. A gift from Ben is there, and Big Big Daddy remains at the back as they've left the 5 16th. They're going to come into the lane. Desert of Malibu on the outside points. Mahogany continues the battle down against the rail. These two now bobbing heads for it. A gift from Ben is stepping out wide, and Big Big Daddy has a mountain to climb, but up front it's a mattress at the moment. Desert of Malibu now looks to stick the flare of a nostril in front. Mahogany continues to battle as they drive now toward the final 16th. It's a Desert of Malibu in a battle with Mahogany and now Desert of Malibu gains the upper hand and begins to come away in the Lady Gita. She's sprinting off to win it easily in the end by maybe four. Close between a gift from Ben and Mahogany. Big Big Daddy making late progress but still fourth. Richard Azan, owner, breeder. It's quite fulfilling to be recognized by Tobo today, the race day.
So in addition to the Stroud's inquiry, there was a, a jockey's objection by second past the post. Rather, third past the post, Ray and Lewis and Mahogany against first past the post, six Desert of Malibu. The jockey's objection has been upheld, and after the Stroud's inquiry, first past the post, Desert of Malibu disqualified and placed behind horse number five, Mahogany, for intimidation and interference in the vicinity of the 100-meter point. The new placings, first one, a gift from Ben, a second, five, Mahogany. Third, six, Desert of Malibu. Fourth, four, Big Big Daddy. Have a look at your monitors for a replay of the incident. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? May we have a connection or a representative for a gift from Ben in the winners and closures? So, a connection for the for no, horse number one, a gift from Ben. You wanted in the winners and closure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Lady Gita Trophy. Lady Gita was a champion four-year-old and upward filly for 1990. Winner of the Red Stripe Caribbean Sprint Championship in 1989 and 1990. The Jamaica 1000 Guinness in 1989 and represented... Jamaica in the Caribbean Classic, a fourth place in 1998. Making the presentation, Craig Bernard of Betmakers, and he makes it to Mr. Desmond Lewis of DSTL and Associates. Also, Mr. Bernard will present gift vouchers from High Pro Feeds, 
and Burger King vouchers to Mr. Lewis. He'll also receive a sheet set from courtesy of LP Azar. Gift basket courtesy of Grace Foods and Cal's Manufacturing Limited. And one case of refreshing Cal's Manufacturing Juice as well. Congratulations to the winning connection, race number seven, the Lady Gita Trophy. Result of the seventh now official horses to the testing barn. One, a gift from Ben, five, mahogany. One and five go to the testing barn. A gift from Ben, 1,236 to win, 252 to place. Second, five, mahogany, 164. Third, six, a desert of Malibu. Fourth, four, big, big daddy. Special double with two, Neo Star, 1,022. Special double with three, Yellowstone, 384. The double event, 34,260. Exactor 1,197. Trifecta 758. Seven triples of 45,274. Nobody won the early pick five. Carry over 430,794.83 cents. Single winner bonus 2,291,586.70 cents. Splits 23, 47, 1, final time, 1,200 meters, or 6 furlongs, 113, 2, the margins 4 by a head.
Horses take the track for the eight, named for Carl Samuda. It's a restricted allowance four for native bred four-year-olds and up, non-winners of three, and imported four-year-olds and up, non-winners of two. The distance six furlongs or 1,200 meters. One city hawk make the weight 53.5 kilos or 118 pounds. Two Wayne's Princess, 50 or 110. Three Kai on the go, 54 or 119. Six Cappuccino, 52.5, 116 pounds. The same for seven Natural Dancer, 52.5 or 116. Nine a Digital Light, 49 kilos or 108. Eleven Hot Stepper, 54 or 119. Wagering on a double event, this is the late double. Exacta, Quinella Trifecta, Superfecta, High Five. You have four minutes to get your bets on. Now that's one of the most 
unforeseeable outcomes of an event as you could ever imagine. You're down to a field of four after the village very scratch of New Star and Yellowstone. And there's, of course, after New Star uh, reared up in the starting gate just a split second before they were sent on their way. And thereafter, you saw a speed duel ensuing there with Mahogany going up against Desert of Malibu. And inside the final half of Horong, Desert of Malibu took the ground of Mahogany. And uh, in turn, Mahogany finishes in third after a gift from Ben runs on to snatch second. Now, there has been a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz around the track. Let me just reiterate the racing rules, which states that if a horse is cost a higher placing as a result of interference, there has to be a disqualification. If Mahogany had finished second, chances are the placings could have been allowed. But the racing rule says once a horse is caused a higher placing as a result of interference, there has to be a disqualification. So there lies the rule, and a very important rule too. So that's the second disqualification of Desert of Malibu after having seven victories out of nine starts. Make that eight victories out of nine starts. So she has now been disqualified twice. We are now on to race number eight, the Car Samuda. Let's take a look. Top selection goes to number five, Bullyproof Coffee. This one was a winner last time out, coming off a one-year break. Looks vastly improved. And Jerome Innes maintains the board for Owen Sharp and Solomon Sharp. Of course, Solomon Sharp, Chairman Supreme Venture Racing and Entertainment Limited, has two runners here, Bulletproof Coffee and Fly Blue Jet. Fly Blue Jet gets 12 to 1. Bulletproof Coffee is at 8 to 5. So let's see how the Sharp pair will perform. Clearly, it's all about Bulletproof Coffee now. Number 10 gets some attention from Sheer to Ben at 3 to 2. The actual favorite in the betting port franchise are Alfred Brown, who's well bet last time out at 2 to 1 over the straight fourth. Then Oasis Jack, who did 58 3. So look for from Sheer to Ben to run well here. Surprise favorite at 3 to 2. Number 12, Burning Valor, ran brave last time out over five straight. A trip short of his best. Now at 6 furlongs, look for another positive effort here. Roger Hewitt maintains the amount for Carl Addison, and the tongue tie has been fitted. Make it 5, 13, 12, 10 in the car Samuda of Atomic of Fame. Bulletproof Coffee over Fly Blue Jet, Burning Valor, and from Sheer to Ben. And speaking of Bulletproof Coffee, here's a rake for you. Cappuccino at odds of 13 to 1. Horse number 6 for your exotics. So if you're looking for an outsider to stick into those exactors, trifectors and superfectors, if you give Bulletproof Coffee a chance at 9 to 5. How about Cappuccino at 13 to 1? Josue Osorio has been injured and will not be riding for the rest of the day. Race nine, the Thornbird Stakes. Number two, come home to me. Now the mount of Jerome Innes. Jerome Innes rides two, come home to me. In the ninth event, the Thornbird Stakes. Late double approaching 1.2 million. Your late double on its way to 1.2 million, and they have closed the front of the gates for the loading process. So get your bets on. 
Loading can start any moment now. Get your bets on. What is it? F four live tickets remaining in the Twilight Six with a net pool, a whopping one. In excess 5.4 million. So we have a four live tickets in the Twilight Six. Want to wish you the best of luck. Two more hurdles to cross. Horses loading, last chance to make your waders. The horses loading. Kai on the go is in. Wayne's Princess also in. Six for along the trip. Working on Cappuccino. Rider comes down from Cappuccino. Shane Richardson. Natural Dancer is next at seven. Lady Ramdolari heads to eight. Rider of a City Hawk, that's Radish Roman. From Sheer to Ben, heads to 10. From Sheer to Ben is in. Hot Stepper is next at 11. Burning Valley loads at 12. Hot Stepper goes in at 1. Kai on the go could be next at 3. Kai on the go is in. Fly Blue Jet lining up for 13. Digital light lining up for nine. And the final one will be bulletproof coffee. Digital light goes in. Fly blue jet hesitating. Fly blue jet is in. Bulletproof coffee follows. We have a line. Six for along the trip. Ready for a start from Denzel Miller. Start holding them. They're often racing. Wayne's Princess steps a bit slow and is left at the back of the field as City Hawk from pole position one takes them passing the uh, six furlong. It's City Hawk in front heading to the five with that lead. Bulletproof Coffee tracking in second. Then comes Cappuccino. Ertigal comes next. Then comes Natural Dancer coming on the outside. That is a Fly Blue Jet right against the rail. Kai on the go as they head past the four. Then comes from Sheer to Ben. Burning Valor comes next. Re recovering up that digital light hooking reverse and racing at the back of the field. That is Lady, Lady Ramdalari. 
and at the back of the field at Wayne's Princess. They come, they're going to come into the lane shortly, and it is still making the runnings hot stepper with that lead. Track City Hawk, rather with that lead right there too and coming on that is natural dancer it's city hawk showing them a clean pair of heel coming to the furlong pole it is city hawk still in front about three four lengths in front of kai on the go coming forward on the rail it's city hawk in front and beginning to beginning to pull away from these and city hawk was never in danger from the the off it's city hawk in front and beginning to pull away city hawk by about four lengths kai on the go is second ertigal is third then comes bulletproof coffee got tied for fifth between from sheer to ben and natural dancer In the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number eight, this one named for Carl Samuda. Number one, City Hawk, a four-year-old chestnut filly. Make that a big filly by Midnight Hawk. Magic City by He's the Real Thing. Bred and own Leroy Williams. Train Ricardo Brown, the winning riders. Two on the day for Radish Roman, the groom. Dave Dixon, second. Number three, Kai on the go. A third, number four, Ertigal. Fourth, number five, Bulletproof Coffee. And a fifth, number seven, Natural Dancer. Final time for six furlongs, one fifteen and three.
They're off and racing. Wayne's Princess steps a bit slow and is left at the back of the field as City Hawk from pole position one takes them passing the uh, six furlong. But it's City Hawk in front heading to the five with that lead. Bulletproof copy tracking in second. Then comes Cappuccino. Ertigal comes next. Then comes Natural Dancer coming on the outside. That is a fly blue jet right against the rail. Kai on the go as they head past the four. Then comes from Sheer to Ben. Burning Valor comes next. R Rick Recovering up that digital light hooking reverse and racing at the back of the field that is Lady Lady Ramdalari and at the back of the field that's Wayne's Princess. They come they're gonna come into the lane shortly and it is still making the runnings. Hot stepper with that lead. Track City Hawk rather with that lead right there too and coming on. That is natural dancer. It's City Hawk showing them a clean Piro heel coming to the furlong pole. It is City Hawk still in front, about three, four lengths in front of Kai on the go coming forward on the rail. It's City Hawk in front and beginning to beginning to pull away from these and City Hawk was never in danger from the, the off. It's City Hawk in front and beginning to pull away. City Hawk by about four lengths. Kai on the go is second. Ertigal is third. Then comes Bulletproof Coffee. Got tied for fifth between from Sheer to Ben and Natural Dancer. Hi there, my name is Carl Semeda and I've been a proud participant in the thoroughbred breeding industry for over 30 years. Despite the challenges from time to time, the joy that comes with having bred and cared for a horse that eventually becomes a champion is among the greatest feelings of joy imaginable. We at Hyde Valley Farm have been blessed with having produced the great Atomica arguably one of the best local bread fillies ever. Thanks to all the wonderful people in the industry who continue to make horse racing one of the greatest sports enjoyed by a wide cross section of Jamaica at all levels. May we continue to grow and develop this great industry for the benefit of all. God bless you all and one love. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Kasamuda OJ.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, your attention call to the winners in closure for the presentation of the Carl Samuda OJ. Making the presentation, Mr. Carl Samuda OJ, and he makes it to Mr. Horrell Aiden. Collecting on behalf of Mr. Leroy Williams. Mr. Samuda will also present gift vouchers from High Pro Feeds and gift vouchers from Burger King. Also a sheet set from LP Azar. And a gift baskets from Cal's and Grace Foods. Congratulations to the winning connections, race number eight, the Carl Samuda OJ. We'd like to thank the following sponsors, High Pro Feeds, LP Azar, Burger King, Cal's, Grace Foods, for their kind sponsorship. Once again, congratulations to the winning connections, race number eight, the Carl Samuda OD, OJ. Result of the eighth now official, horses to the testing barn, one City Hawk, five Bulletproof Coffee. One and five both go to the testing barn. The winner, City Hawk, 1,034 to win, 522 to place. Second, three Kai on the go, 342. Third, four Ertigal, 1,070. Fourth to five Bulletproof Coffee, fifth to seven Natural Dancer. Double event, 21,318. Quinella, 4,766. Exacta, 3,932. Trifecta, 13,322. Superfecta, 60,769. Nobody won the high five. Carry over to race nine coming up. $177,730.78. The triple, one winner, 334,776. The splits are 23.449. Final time, 1,200 meters or six furlongs, 115.2. The margins, four and a quarter by five. Remember, gambling is just a game. Choose to gamble responsibly. Set a budget. Avoid chasing losses. And stop gambling when you reach a money limit. For gambling help, call RISE. 888-991-4146. A message from the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission.
May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please, for the second and the third place finishers in all races? You may go to the director's box to, to retrieve your gift vouchers for feed and Burger King vouchers. So that's the second and the third place finishers in all the races so far. You may go now to the director's box and retrieve your gift vouchers. The Carl Sabuda goes to City Hawk, horse number one at nine to one. A gate to our performance by City Hawk, well ridden by Ryder Sherman. He rides very well from in front and he bounces back right away after the disqualification of Desert of Malibu and gets his uh, official second win on the card. Would have been a triple had uh, Desert of Malibu not been disqualified. So City Hawk at nine to one makes it a gate to wire performance. Big run by Springer the Market Kai on the go. Make a note of that one. The exact there returns 3,932. Quinella Plus is a must, 4,766. And how about that triple? One winner of the triple, $334,776. Imagine that, a $50 per stake, triple. $334,776. We'll soon have the live ticket count update if there are any live tickets. Coming up next. The big one, the next step in the 2024 road to the Triple Crown, we have the Phillies in the third bird stakes, a big field of 15, and they go 1,400 meters or seven furlongs. It's for a purse of 1.75 million, and this is the 31st running of the third bird stakes. Top selection goes to number four, Run Julie Run. Six-time champion jockey Omar Walker, right to trainer Ian Passard. And this Run Julie Run has shown a lot of class in her five outings today. She won on debut. Beating Queen of Spades and Francis. We saw Francis win earlier today, one race, one. Second time out, Ron Julie Run was second by five and a quarter lengths behind the imported Philly Digital One in 113.2 for six furlongs. Third out in, also beaten by Digital One. That was over seven furlongs in 126.3. Digital One, very impressive so far. Undefeated in three starts. 
Run Judy Run raced in the Jamaica Two Stakes on Boxing Day and ran a brave race. Turned for home in front by two lengths, pouncing on Banadura, who led for the first uh, four to five furlongs, but had no answer to the late burst of interesting times ahead. And we'll see interesting times ahead in action tomorrow in the Prince Consort Stakes, making his seasonal debut. Run Judy Run, last time out, beat into third behind Amazing Force and Come Home to Me. That was our seasonal debut when Fitty with the blinkers for the first time went up at even money, showed some pace, but she really didn't quicken sufficiently from the midway point of the contest. The blinkers have been removed by Trinidad and Passard. Run Judy Run has worked well, five and a half furlongs with 108 and four fifths by 102 and two fifths on the 7th of April. She looks well prepared for her start of the road to the Triple Crown. The Thornbird Stakes, Run Judy Run, is at eight to five, and she's my top selection, beating the last two outings by Coates, Amazing Force, and Interesting Times Ahead. Number eight is Miss Cherry, a half-sister to none other than Mojito, and Mojito's last year's Kingston Stakes winner, as well as Prince Consort Stakes, and the Jamaica 2000 Guinness. So she's bred in the purple out of the San Giro Dam, 50 Shades of Ray. She won on debut by three and a half lengths, beating Francis. We saw Francis win race number one, impressive enough today. Miss Terry was sent off the actual two to one lukewarm favorite in the Jamaica two stakes event on Boxing Day, beating six by 17 and three quarter lengths behind interesting times ahead, Ron Julie Run, and fast and furious links. So Miss Terry will have a lot of running to do to turn the tables on Ron Julie Run. Her seasonal debut came in the Hotline Stakes. That was the first race in the road to the Triple Crown, and that was won by Banadura in fairly convincing fashion. Miss Cherry went up at 8 to 5 with 57 kilos, and she was fought by 6 and 3 quarter lengths prominent from the half mile, but just uh, didn't uh, quicken from the midway point of the contest. She now has a further along of the travel. Hall of Fame trainer Richard Zan has fitted the tongue tie and removed the figure eight. Ray and Lewis, the champion jockey, he's aboard. Miss Terry gets 7-2. to two. And there she's on your monitor right now. Not a very robust-looking sort. She's built to go distances of ground. So look for Miss Terry to be very effective in deep stretch over seven furlongs. Ray and Lewis looks for a double for Richard Azan. So they're looking to bookend the card. One race one with Francis. And they're looking to win race number nine with Miss Cherry. Number nine, Badadura. This one won the Hotline Stakes. In workmanlike fashion, somehow, was rated well early in the contest behind the leader, Crypto Girl. Pounced on Crypto Girl at the quarter pole, gained the ascendancy at the forum pole, and won going away by two and a half lengths. Crypto Girl returned and flopped as a big favorite next in town, beaten by Oso oh Smart. So, not paying too much attention to that uh, victory by Badadura. Prior to that, in the Jamaica Two Stakes last season, led for the first half mile, but then blew up eight by 30 and a quarter length behind interesting times ahead. Run, Judy, run, and fast and furious links. So, run, Judy, run, rested the lead from Banadura, nearing the three forum point in the contest. So, Banadura will have a lot of running to do to stave off the likes of run, Judy, run. 57 kilos of weight, Robert Haldine riding for Jason Acosta and Melade Azan. CD. Number 10 is Midnight Flight. What can you say about Midnight Flight? It was all the rage on debut at 6 to 5. And that day, I think everyone knew that Midnight Flight was going to win, except your student Michael Kane. And uh, this one was well touted. A first time from Donovan Plummer Barn, ridden by Philip Partfriend, romped home to victory. Five and a half lengths clear in 102 and two feet of a second. Not uh, the quickest of times, but was visually impressive in victory. Never asked a serious question, beating She's Dallas Love. And uh, we look forward to a big run here from Midnight Flight. Second time, Lasix steps up from five rounds to seven furlongs. Matthew Bennett replaces Philip Parchment. Second time, Lasix and figure eight refitted once again. And she looks fairly well. And she should report an improved thoroughbred from that debut win. A big feel of 15. That's my best four, four, eight, nine, and ten. Maybe you want to pay some attention to horses such as Buttercup, stablemate of Miss Cherry. Buttercup has first time Lasix. Shamar Mio riding for Hall of Fame trainer Richard Azan. 
Buttercup won over seven furlongs. First time at a distance of seven furlongs, and she could be something to have a look at here at 32 to 1 for your exotics. Number six takes the track early, and that's Battle Angel. Number six on the track early, Battle Angel. O'Shea Nugent riding for Anthony Nunes. Battle Angel was awarded first place last time out when finishing second by Fordens to Dancing Aviator. So Battle Angel. Now among winners, looks very hard to back at 99 to 1. Other horses of interest include 13 Ama was a 9 net winner at this trip of 7 furlongs in 128 and a fifth of a second, beating Kaylin Medded and Brenda Boy. And that was a vastly improved effort. Turned around from third by 11 and 3 quarter lengths on debut, beat by Blue Sensation. And Blue Sensation is also present here. John Post 5 and Blue Sensation gets 58 to 1. Ama gets 5 to 1. So if you like Ama at 5 to 1, how about Blue Sensation who beat her? by 11 and 3 quarter lengths on the 27th of January. So you're getting some value there. So these are horses you ought to include on your trifectas, superfectas, and high fives at good prices too. Shiny Star number 14 on debut went off at even money, fought by two lengths behind Firecracker. Lasix administered second time out, so clearly she bled on debut. Next time out, she won by 7 and a quarter lengths, making all the running over six and a half hours, beating Captain Sparrow who returned to win since, and we see Captain Sparrow in action in the Prince Consort Stakes tomorrow. So Shiny Star at 6-1, to one, also worthy of consideration for your exotics. 4, 8, 9, and 10, though, in the Thornbird Stakes. Run, Judy, run over Mystery Baladura. Midnight Flight. Horses take the track for the ninth. It's the Thornbird Stakes, Grade 1 or Grade 2. It's a graded stakes for native bred three year old fillies only. The distance 1400 meters or seven furlongs. Number two, come home to me, make the rider Jerome Innes. 12, don't tell Lulu. 54 kilos or 119 pounds. Wagering on Exacta, Quinella Trifecta, Superfecta High Five with a carryover in excess of $177,000. Seven minutes, get your bets on. So the live ticket count in the late pick five, late pick five, one live ticket remaining in the late pick five and one ticket remaining in the strike four. Best of luck as you have the final hurdle to cross. And going back to race number five, the race number five, the Thorbred Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy with the free stallion serve at Fairway Stud Farm. Courtesy of Mr. Edison Chai, the stallion in question is Silver Strike. So Silver Strike, the free stallion serve for the Toba Trophy winners, Silver Strike.
So the runners are arriving at the post for race number nine, the uh, Thornbird uh, Stakes. And we have a high five a carryover, high five carryover in excess 177,000. High five pool approaching 400,000. Get your bets on. High five pool approaching 600,000. The high five pool on its way to 600,000. The carryover in excess 177,000. Get your bets on. The runners have arrived at the post. Get your bets on. High five pool approaching 700,000. The high five pool on its way to 700,000. Uh, they have closed the front of the gate for the loading process. So the high five pool on its way to 700,000 and in excess 177,000. Your carryover. Last chance to wager as the runners are about to load. Horses about to load. Horses now about to load. Buttercup they try with first at one.
But a cop looks to be in. Gate 7 is now filled. Oh, so smart will come from there. So loading up procedure on the way. Get your bets on if you haven't. So two have loaded thus far. Building up procedure, going very slowly. Lucy in the sky goes in at three. One of the Elizabeth the Costa horses. Blue Sensation looks to be in at five. Battle Angel goes in at six. So the loading up continues. Miss Cherry goes in at eight. Try with midnight flight. Midnight flight may be in at ten. So we continue to load very slowly at the moment. Lady Lauren looks to be in at 11. Don't tell Lulu in at 12. Ama in at 13. Shiny Star coming into 14. So we wait on Come Home to Me. Fast and Furious links lining up to load 15. Gate 4 is empty. Run, Julie, run. We'll come from there. This is the Thornbird Stakes. Run, Julie, run is in. Waiting on Fast and Furious links. Fast and Furious links in. And now Fast and Furious links. Has burst out of the front of the gates. The fronts of gate 13 and 14 also open. So waiting on fast and furious links to be reloaded. Closing back gates 13 and 14.
Fast and Furious Lynx, they try with once again. Fast and Furious Lynx looks to be in. Field and line for the Thornbird Stakes. They're off. Seven furlongs to run. And Buttercup has hit into the rails and thrown the rider on the ground. So Buttercup out of it as they go charging down the back stretch. Midnight Flight showing on that lead from Banadura. Fast and Furious Lynx looks to be on the outside of runners as they charge away down the back stretch. Come Home To Me races up with Shiny Star for company. Miss Cherry races next. Run Julie Run asks to pick up as they leave the five. Amma races in behind those several lengths off that lead. Lady Lauren is racing up next with Oh So Smart. Battle Angel just on the inside. Blue Sensation now making some ground. Asked to make some ground too. That's Lucy in the sky as they've left the half mile marker and at the back of the field it's a don't tell Lulu. They go blazing up down toward the final three eights and it's out in front, a Panadura who has it by some three lengths. Midnight Flight in pursuit. Come home to me as they're fast and furious. Links also in the red racing just in behind them with Miss Cherry and Shani Star. But Panadura brings them into the top of the lane in the Thornbird. They leave the quarter pole. Here is Come Home to Me now coming home strong down against the rail. But it's Panadura with that lead from Come Home to Me in the pink cap. Miss Cherry now asked to come with a rush. Panadura being caught now by Come Home to Me, gaining all the time as they flash past for a long Paul, it's Banadura. Come home to me has to be switched on the outside as Banadura took the rail. Banadura continuing to hold the lead. Come home to me and run Julie Run coming fast but Banadura wins the Thornbird over Come home to me then run Julie Run. Shiny Star close between Blue Sensation and Lady Lauren or also oh Smart rather. And please note, there's now a George's Inquiry. George's Inquiry. Please hold all tickets, George's Inquiry.
In the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number nine, the Thornbird Stakes. Uh, number nine, Vanadura. A three-year-old bay filly by Casual Trick. Esperanza by Legal Process. Red Orange Valley Estates Limited. Old Milaid Azan CD is the second win on the card for the champion trainer, Jason Da Costa. Also the second for the rider, Robert Hardball Hallidin. The groom, Christo Anthony, second. Uh, number two, Come Home to Me. And that's uh, Jason Da Costa, exacto. Third, number th four, Run Julie Run. Fourth, number 14, Shani Star. And a fifth, number five, Blue Sensation. Final time for seven furlongs, 129 and one. So here we are with champion jock, champion trainer rather, Jason DeCosta. Uh, this horse won the hotline stakes um, quite comfortably on last. Um, came in not the favorite, surprisingly. Um, what were your thoughts when seeing her going off at about odds of around eight to one, knowing that you were so, um, you know, this horse won so comfortably in the hotline stakes? Um, I was a bit surprised. I, I thought I should have been, uh, um, been a bit shorter um, coming off of that good win uh, after layoff. So I knew should should only improve off of that run. So I was kind of surprised at that. Speaking about surprises, come home to me, run a big one. Um, looked like you would have tagged um, Banadora, but you know, um, Hardball Haladin with his um, good riding tactics got the job done. How surprised are you about come home to me's performance this afternoon? Well, uh, I've always had high hopes for her, um, so you know, it looks like she's just improving now. So hopefully she continues to improve, and you know, we'll see where she goes from from there. All right. So you basically have run one to in this event. Will these two horses be going in to the first um, to in the Guineas come um, come in the next race? Yes, um, barring any unforeseen um, circumstances, uh, both of them should be heading for the um, Guinness. All right, good luck with that, Jason. Thank, thank you very much, Robert. Here we are with Milad Azan um, from the free, frame of I Am Fred. A good win today. How, how? How happy are you? How elated you are to get the job done I, in this preseason classic? I cannot be any happier. I cannot be any happier. I, I mean, we had people saying that we had no chance and run Julie John. Why did I start? But I have an excellent trainer, a fantastic jockey on board, and you know God is good. And listen, we have good ways to go with this horse. 
So after seeing this horse basically made every post a winning one, how confident are you going into the Guineas? Well, you know, my trainer says we'll wait one step at a time. Congratulations, Thanks my lady. Again. Thanks again. Look forward, here we, look forward to more races. So he, here we are with Milad Azan and with Jason DeCosta getting the job done. Um, congratulations, Thanks gentlemen. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. For the Thornbird Stakes, there are seven furlongs to run. And Buttercup has hit into the rails and thrown the rider on the ground. So Buttercup out of it as they go charging down the back stretch. Midnight Flight showing on that lead from Banadura. Fast and Furious Links looks to be on the outside of runners as they charge away down the back stretch. Come Home to Me races up with Shiny Star for company. Miss Cherry races next. Run Julie Run asks to pick up as they leave the five. Amma races in behind those several lengths off that lead. Lady Lauren is racing up next with Oh So Smart. Battle Angel just on the inside. Blue Sensation now making some ground. Asked to make some ground too. That's Lucy in the sky as they've left the half mile marker. And at the back of the field, it's a Don't Tell Lulu. They go blazing up down toward the final three eighths. And it's out in front, a Panadura who has it by some three lengths. Midnight Flight in pursuit, come home to me as there. Fast and Furious Links also in the red racing, just in behind them with Miss Cherry and Shani Star. But Panadura brings them into the top of the lane in the Thornbird. They leave the quarter pole. Here is come home to me now, coming home strong down against the rail. But it's Panadura with that lead from come home to me in the pink cap. Miss Cherry now asked to come with a rush. Panadura being caught now by come home to me, gaining all the time as they flash past for a long Paul, it's Banadura. Come home to me has to be switched on the outside as Banadura took the rail. Banadura continuing to hold the lead. Come home to me and run Julie Run coming fast, but Banadura wins the Thornbird. Over come home to me, then run Julie Run. Shiny Star close between Blue Sensation and Lady Lauren, or also oh Smart rather. And after the Stu's inquiry, there'll be no change, no change after the inquiry. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention called to the winner's enclosure for the presentation of the Thornbird Stakes in honor of Thornbird, Horse of the Year in 1984, winner of the Jamaica Derby, the Jamaica Oaks, the 1,000 Guineas, the Jamaica 1,000 Guineas, and the Shell Silver Plate in 1984. Making the presentation, trainer Jason Da Costa, and he makes it to the winning owner. Milad Azan CD. Congratulations to the winning connections, race number nine, the Thornbird Stakes. Presentation of gift vouchers for feed courtesy of Hypro.
Burger King vouchers as well. A sheet set, courtesy of Help PSR. Gift basket, courtesy of Cal's and Grace Foods. And please note, the second and the third place finishers will receive gift vouchers of Hypro Feed and Burger King vouchers to be collected in the director's room. Once again, we congratulate the winners. Winning connections, race number nine, the Thornbird Stakes. Result of the ninth now official, horses to the testing barn. Four run Julie run, nine Banadura. Four and nine both go to the testing barn. A Banadura, 976 to win, 244 to place. A second two come home to me, 376. Third four run Julie run, 152. Fourth 14 Shani Star, fifth five Blue Sensation. Double event, 12,862. Quinella. A 6,562. Exacta, 5,196. Trifecta, 8,270. The Superfecta, 68,297. Two high fives, 310,634. Five triples, 159,443. Place spot eight, or one winner with two pieces, each piece returning $403,115. Nobody. Spotted six in the twilight six, 61 with five of six, a 22,249 each. Carry over in the twilight six, four million, a 71,658.61 cents. Nobody won the strike four, carry over there, a 1,161,845.72 cents. Single winner in the strike four, two million, 133,581.23. Nobody won the pick five, the late pick five. Carry over one million five hundred seventy one thousand one seventy nine seventy six cents. Single winner two million two hundred ninety one thousand five eighty six and seventy cents. Splits were twenty four forty eight one fourteen one. Final time one twenty nine one. The margins one and a half by one. That's it for today. More racing tomorrow. We'll be back with you then. Stand by for Michael Kane as he will give you the day's recap.
Our great day of Thorbert race has come to a closure here once again at Cable Dis Park. We had nine races for you today, and indeed, it was a combination of the, the, the Thorbert Stakes as well as the Lady Gita, and also the Thorbert Owners and Breeders of Association, uh, Thorbert Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy. Uh, those are the three features on the card. Just to get to that three plays, though, uh, we have uh, in the jockey's calling three riders responsible for six of the Nine was written today. Renews had a double. Ryder Roman had a double. And Robert Haldin also had a double. So they started the show in a big way today. Ryder Roman, really, uh, uh, he would have had a triple. But one of those horses that he won aboard was disqualified. Desert of Malibu. Jason Acosta, champion trainer, saddled two winners. And uh, Oral Hayden saddled two winners as well. And we have... Three races to recap, races five, seven, and nine. Race number five was the Thorbert Owners and Breeders Association of Jamaica Trophy, presented by Ham Stables Limited. And we had a field of seven, going nine fillers and 25 yards, the first 1.25 million. The favorite was Rainsville, Tevin Foster for Hall of Fame trader Richard Azan. Also, also had some good support for Sunset Silhouette, Abigail Abel for Jason Acosta. And there was good support as well for Sonny T and Chippy, Radish Roman for Spencer Chung, and All for Love with Omar Walker for Trina Gershon Bratti also got her fair attention in the betting. Storm is in, they're off. First start, positive ID though, left behind horses. Sunset Silhouette gets a good start, so to Bridal Blush, and Bridal Blush will take them along toward the mile and the clubhouse turn. Bridal Blush off the rail, racing with that lead, Sunny T and Chippy nearest to it. Reigns with the grey edging closer, Storm now beginning to pick up and uh, making gains on the leader. All for Love races further back, Sunset Silhouette in behind, and positive ID is at the back and uh, struggling as they go toward the back stretch. Bridal Blush out in front. Storm continues the chase from second as they run toward the final six. Sunny T and Chippy settle down in third. Rainsville cruising in fourth. All for Love is running in fifth as they go passing the sixth. Sunset Silhouette is next and forget positive ID with Mount Everest to climb. They make their way toward the final five. Bridal Blush attempting to go all the way. Storm sitting in the dicky seat in second, a length and a half back. Sunny T and Chippy now begins to roll. All for Love in the white race is back in fourth, five and a half off that lead. Rainsville now gets going with Sunset Silhouette and Positive ID continues to race last. They've left the half mile. The tempo now should increase as they're approaching the final 7.16th. Bridal Blush trying to slip away. Leads up by some two lengths. Sunny T and Chippy now goes a hunting. All for love. Close enough if good enough. So to Sunset Silhouette. Rainsville has six or seven lengths to find. A break back to Storm and Positive ID now making some positive ground. Maybe too late as they leave the 5.16th and will come into the top of the lane. Bridal Blush has to be caught. They're at the two. Sunny T and Chippy has done the job and now grabs that lead. What all for love on the outside in the all white sunset silhouette and Abigail Abel now asked to roll down against the rail it's Sunny T and Chippy out in front sunset silhouette now nibbling at the lead and getting closer with every stride they flash past the furlong pole it's Sunny T and Chippy being driven to the max by Radish Roman beginning to open a length being chased all the while by sunset silhouette who won't stop Sunny T and Chippy from winning the thoroughbred owners and breeders association of Jamaica trophy it's tight in behind between positive ID and all for love. So the Toba Trophy goes to 5 to 1 chance, Sonny T and Chippy. Radish Roman returns to active competition today and uh, scores aboard Sonny T and Chippy for trainer Spencer Chong. Our next recap race is going to be race number seven. The Lady Gita Trophy, 2.5 million in purse, and we had a feed of 60 critical postwords just before they were got to be sent on their way. We had an incident involving Neil Star who reared up. And Yellowstone also got injured in that incident. So we're down to a feed of four after the scratch of New Star and Yellowstone. And the big favorite was Desert of Malibu. And the Mahogany making a seasonal debut was also fairly well fancied as well. They're off for the Lady Gita. They all came out as one. There's a battle up front for that lead. A gift from Ben is racing on the rail. Mahogany now moving up. Desert of Malibu right there. These three in a very tight clump as they run past the five and a gap back to the slow Big Big Daddy. They're on their way toward the half mile in the Lady Gita and the war up front continues. Mahogany now tested by Desert of Malibu and neck down. A gift from Ben is racing just two lengths in behind them in third and forget Big Big Daddy needing a tow truck at the moment as they're about to arrive at the final three. 
There's a top Malibu testing mahogany. These two going at it, they're bobbing heads. A gift from Ben is there, and Big Big Daddy remains at the back as they've left the 516th. They're going to come into the lane. Desert of Malibu on the outside points. Mahogany continues the battle down against the rail. These two now bobbing heads for it. A gift from Ben is stepping out wide, and Big Big Daddy has a mountain to climb, but up front it's a mattress at the moment. Desert of Malibu now looks to stick the flare of a nostril in front. Mahogany continues to battle as they drive now toward the final 16th. It's a Desert of Malibu in a battle with Mahogany, and now Desert of Malibu gains the upper hand and begins to come away in the Lady Gita. She's sprinting off to win it easily in the end by maybe four. Close between a gift from Ben and Mahogany, Big Big Daddy making late progress, but still fourth. So first of all, I suppose Desert of Malibu disqualified for causing interference to Mahogany, and uh, the runner-up was a gift from Ben at 11 to 1, who got the race by the Stroud Zoom Room. One up here in the saddle for Fitzgerald Richards and TSTL and Associates. Upset in the Lady Gita Trophy, a small feed of four, and the second longest shot on the board, got the win via the Stroud Zoom, and rightfully so, as Mahogany was interfered with and caused a higher place in and uh, finished in third spot. Next recap race is going to be race number nine, the big one, the 31st running of the Thornburg Six. The road to the Triple Crown for 2024 continues. The first leg was the Hotline Stakes, won by Banadura. And here comes the second leg for the finish, the Thornburg Six. And we had a big field of 15. The betting was centered around Run Julie Run. She went off the 65 favorite Omar Walker for trainer Ian Passard. There was also good support for Miss Terry. Ray and Lewis looking for another win of the card for trainer Richard Azan. We also had fierce support for Banadura, Robert Halley for Jason Costa. There's also interesting betting around Shiny Star. Actually went up the second choice in the betting, Tevin Foster for Lawrence Mantle. Ama also got good support, Radish Roman for Ian Passard. So, bar the favorite, Run Judy Run, there was a flutter for most of the other horses in the 31st running of the Thornbird Stakes. Field in line for the Thornbird Stakes. They're off, seven furlongs to run. And Buttercup has hit into the rails and thrown the rider on the ground. So Buttercup out of it as they go charging down the back stretch. Midnight flight showing on that lead from Banadura. Fast and Furious Lynx looks to be on the outside of runners as they charge away down the back stretch. Come Home to Me races up with Shiny Star for company. Miss Cherry races next. Run Julie Run asks to pick up as they leave the five. Amma races in behind those several lengths off that lead. Lady Lauren is racing up next with Oh So Smart. Battle Angel just on the inside. Blue Sensation now making some ground. Asked to make some ground too. That's Lucy in the sky as they've left the half mile marker. And at the back of the field, it's a Don't Tell Lulu. They go blazing up down toward the final three eights. And it's out in front, a Panadura who has it by some three lengths. Midnight Flight in pursuit, come home to me, is there. Fast and Furious links also in the red racing, just in behind them with Miss Cherry and Shani Star. But Panadura brings them into the top of the lane in the Thornbird. They leave the quarter pole. Here is come home to me now, coming home strong down against the rail. But it's Panadura with that lead from come home to me in the pink cap. Miss Cherry now asked to come with a rush. Panadura being caught now by come home to me, gaining all the time as they flash past for a long Paul, it's Banadura. Come home to me has to be switched on the outside as Banadura took the rail. Banadura continuing to hold the lead. Come home to me and run Julie Run coming fast, but Banadura wins the Thornbird over Come Home to Me. Then run Julie Run, Shiny Star close between Blue Sensation and Lady Lauren, or also oh Smart rather. A sharp performance here by Banadura, winner of the Hotline Stakes at the start of the 2024 Road to the Triple Crown, and she wins again. This time around in the Thornbird Stakes. So she's two from two on the road to the Triple Crown 2024. And that was a fine ride by Robert Haldane for Jason Acosta Banadura. Now we'll go on to the Port Moor, which is going to be the next big assignment for the Phillies. Tomorrow we'll see the Colts and Gallons in action in the Prince Consort Stakes. And that's going to be over seven furlongs as well. A big carryovers all around on the car today. Twilight Six over four million. And we have the Strike Four over 1.1 million, as well as the Peak Five over $1.5 million. So big things in store for you tomorrow. Regular six, of course, over $3.8 million in that single with a bonus that will be up for grabs as well. So tomorrow we'll be having 10 races. And indeed, first post was noon. And we look forward to having you back tomorrow here at Cape and Spark. I'm your Alice, Michael Cade, on behalf of the team of the Home of Champions Sport Facts, also on behalf of our promoters, Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited. Have a good evening and see you tomorrow at the races.